Hey, everybody. Have you heard about the Drunken Peasants Patreon? It helps support the show while getting you some cool perks. Check it out. For $1 per month, you get to use our exclusive fan chat that appears at the bottom of the screen on every episode. For $5 per month, you get two new private shows, including Actual Mania, as well as our back catalog of private shows, plus all lower tier perks. For $10 per month, you get all of our monthly video content. This includes multiple post shows, our monthly reviews, our back catalog of all that content, plus all lower tier perks. For $15 per month, your name will appear in the ending credits of each DP episode, plus all lower tier perks. For $25 per month, you get to take part in our monthly booking committee hangout to help us book our Patreon content for that month, plus all lower tier perks. For $33 per month, you get an exclusive piece of DP merch each month, plus all lower tier perks. For $50 per month, you appear in the opening credits for each DP episode, plus all lower tier perks. For $100 per month, you get to join us as a guest on an episode of the Drunken Peasants Podcast. Plus, you guessed it, all lower tier perks. Visit patreon.com slash dp now to become a patron of the Drunken Peasants Podcast. Drunken Peasants Podcast. I gotta get away this. No! Say, man, you got a joint? Uh, no, not on me, man. I don't have facts to back this up. It'd be a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> That's true. Sometimes I cry. Oh! Lift my butthole, he laughed. <laughs> From the strangest corners of the internet, here to bring you opinions of the world from an altered perspective, here are your hosts, the Drunken Peasants. Hi everybody, welcome to the Drunken Peasants Podcast, this is episode 1319, we're back again for another Saturday bonus show. Want to remind everyone to check out... The audio version of DP because you get extra content there for free before every episode. We just recorded a new pre-show before this started. We talked about some old school wrestling and other stuff. You don't want to miss it. It'll be posted later on after the show ends. It's going to be amazing. You don't want to miss it. Free. Free. It's free. It's free. Please like the stream, by the way. Liking the stream helps us out a lot. And before we get into tonight's content... I have to once again preview to all of you our documentary series on the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Myself and Jeff Holiday, we got really drunk. Producer Matt was there. James Rolfe was there, too, by the way, but we didn't put that in the preview. But, yeah, here's the trailer. Uh, you should sign up, patreon.com slash DP, $10 and above, premiering this Monday. Don't miss it. Here, here it is. Check it out. Eleven thirty. Eleven thirty. All right. So we've got an hour and fifteen minutes. All right. I see an otter. Well, Somebody's gonna place. fuck that otter. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, robbery. You wanna fucking go? Still another. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm not fucking around. Like, I'll, I'll murder a motherfucker right she, now. She told Ben to stop. <laughs> Dino? I'm shooting your only fans right now. <laughs> Goodbye, Jeff Holiday. Goodbye. He's headed back. Uh, Portland, keep my ass again. Yeah. Yeah. That look on that look on Jeff Holiday's face when he's leaving at the end, you could tell he's wrecked. <laughs> it was like the end of old Yeller. Uh, yeah. Spoilers for those of you who haven't seen the documentary yet. Yes, yeah, and uh, like after he gets on that train, I actually enter the train and shoot him and put him out of his misery. 
Hey, yeah. Spoilers. The Jeff do, Holiday people... you see on the show these days is all CGI. How do people get to watch that documentary? Patreon.com slash DP. Sign up at the $10 and above level. And it's coming out this Monday. But you should just sign up now because there's so much content that's already there. And new content that's coming out before the end of this month. Yeah, a lot of people think that $10 can be better spent elsewhere. That's empirically wrong. No. Master Sin spending $20, which is, you know, Super Jet, Streamlabs, the best way to spend $20, obviously. Not $10, where you would go patreon.com slash DP. Yes. We got our buddy this Josh. This is financial advice. We got Josh here tonight. Welcome back, Josh. How you doing tonight? Pretty good. I'm just here to be your most talkative guest again. Yeah, do it. Somebody in the chat called you a vaping weirdo. What are you vaping today? Uh, mint. It's mint nicotine bullshit. Nice. Anybody who thinks Josh is weird is probably also weird, and I'll tell you why. Because you're watching us live tonight, Saturday bonus show. What I want to say, Let's if you go. don't like Josh, I think he rules your sorry lives, all right? And Joshy, Joshy, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> and if you're weird, please come to New York and let's have some sex. Ooh. Hey. Uh. New York sex. New York sex is better than most other sex I've heard. You know, uh, you know. Josh came yeah, to Seattle did. one time and I took him around like me and him ate at Little John's and... Uh, uh, I took him to uh, the unicorn. I showed him like the dildo claw machine and everything. Did you get a corn dog? No, no. Uh, from where? Little John's? No, no, from the unicorn. They do, do they corn have corn dogs, dogs? there. Oh, I didn't do even they? know they that. Have tons of corn dogs. Yeah, I they have a specialty like... corn dogs, and they do like the unicorn jizz drink. It's called <laughs> unicorn jizz. <laughs> yeah, I just spent like twenty minutes trying to get a dildo out of the claw machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you win? No, no. No. Did you use your mouth or your ass? The claw. Uh, I used my he mouth. Used the I claw. tried both. Oh. I oh. tried a little bit of both. The claw oh. and then my mouth and then my ass, and it just didn't work out. Oh. <laughs> By the way, everybody, we're trying to meet our goal, which these days the community has come through big time, and we're rolling into Saturday already at 86% of the way to our goal. The, the the link to help us reach it is right there at the top of the chat. If during this stream we happen to surpass the goal, I'm going to start next week's goal tonight. So please don't hesitate. And tomorrow, oh my God, my favorite holiday, St. Paddy's Day. Yeah. Tomorrow, I am... I, I already had a corned beef dinner earlier today, but tomorrow I'm going to... Dude, do you get... Do you get the cabbage farts? I don't know. I have farts all the time anyway. So but with sure. cab <laughs> Okay. Is there something you eat where your farts like gross you out? Like like even you? I, I, it's like a roll of the dice. Like I don't know. Like, it's, <laughs> it, it happens often. <laughs> I can't attribute it to one thing. Yeah. Dude, cabbage is like fart city. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's good though. It's worth it. Yeah. Do you prefer like with your corned beef? Do you prefer green or red cabbage or like red slash purple cab cabbage? It's always green for me, but uh, red. Sometimes we'll do both. I'll be. But, uh, my favorite like homemade coleslaw has red cabbage in it. Here's a fiver to the fun. Thank that you. Send Jared into the sun in Minecraft. <sighs> whoa, 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 egghead, egghead, egghead. Yeah, we don't want we don't want Jared playing Minecraft, all right? There's a lot of kids playing that. Send him in the, the actual sun. <laughs> Minecraft streamers are always doing that stuff, man. Yep. I don't know. Yep. Jared would probably just dirty up the sun anyway. Yeah, I do, yeah, I don't want to mess up the sun. But I, I guess agree. if it was if it was between the actual sun and somebody else's sun. Send Jared to the actual sun. I'm at, I'm actually going to put this out there. I did a tweet to Team YouTube against Jared, and I, I linked a video that I'm about to play for. First of all, even if you don't have a Twitter, create a Twitter account right now, everybody. If only just to retweet and like this. Hi, Vito. Come to L.A. We get that. 
Clearman's red cabbage salad for day. That's delicious, Vito. I appreciate it. Um, Vito, people call you a pedo all the time, and of course we know it's not true. Just because you have a sense of humor, they say that. But this guy is an actual pedo, Vito, and I think you'll agree. Everyone, go to that go to that tweet and re-like it. Or like it and retweet it is what I meant. Uh, I'm going to play this video for you guys. This is a Jared video where he admits to dating an underage girl and then she breaks up with him because he was like pressuring her to send him nudes. Wait, was she like a tad underage? <laughs> a ta- it doesn't matter if it's a tad. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Here it is. Here it is. That's what he says, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's having a lot of fun chat with y'all man i was having kind of a shitty day because this girl kind of broke up with me it was a dumb internet relationship anyway though and come to find out she may have been a tad bit underage and that's a tad bit underage that's why that thomas the tank engine guy was calling me a pedo just dumb corny bullshit like that um but uh you know it is what it is i shouldn't let that bring me down um uh-huh. But, uh, oh, it ain't nothing, Alan. That's, that's pretty much the story. The bitch broke up with me, man. She just, she thought I was being demanding because I just wanted to see some pics. You know what I'm saying? Like, I- he's, he's admitting to committing a, a felony right here. She's, she's like, look, uh, I, I, you're not being demanding. I just, I don't want to commit a felony for you. <laughs> if you really loved me, you'd wait until I was, you know, not a troll. Hopefully, this was one of the fifteen-year-old fake trolls that were trolling him. I it wasn't know. an actual underage kid. I don't know. Just be at one hundred, you know, because I know you guys are legit and you, you you trust what I'm saying. You guys know I'm not a creep, but it's just, yo, man, like I'm a man and I have needs. You know what I'm saying, Alan? Like, and everyone else. You guys know, you know I'm not a need- creep, and he follows it up with a creepy thing to say <laughs> whether or not the woman was underage. It's just like. It, 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 no man needs to say, I'm a man, I've got needs. That's creepy no matter what yes. you're talking about. The other man, and she wouldn't do that for me. And so I got upset, and I said, bitch, you know what? I think you just don't trust me. I didn't call her a bitch, but I wanted to. <laughs> and, you know, because I think <laughs> so she weak. felt like I was just something. I didn't call her a bitch, but, but I wanted to. <laughs> and then we have to play the definitive Jared video really quick for anyone that doesn't get it. I don't care about age. I date anybody. It doesn't matter. I don't follow society's rules. And, you know, people think ill of me for that, but it doesn't matter to me. I never cared about what people think of me, you know? That's why Chris calls me a pedo and all these funny names, you know? Even though he's really just... I, I don't think there's a word that can describe his level of sickness, but... If you feel you have chemistry towards someone, you know, like you connect in a spiritual way, then go for it. Whether they're, you know, 14, 48, 99, whatever, doesn't matter, dude. Sure, 12 is cool with me. That's great, man. See, the funny thing about adolescence is they we're, we're never... We're wandering out of the mind, tad bit territory. ...sold their soul yet. And so they still have purity in them. And if you can get one young like that, then that's freaking great. You know, most of the time, though, their parents probably wouldn't be cool with that, and that's understandable. But the funny thing is, a lot of parents are are so stupid, and they insult their own children, saying, you know, well, my kid can't date someone younger because their brain hasn't developed. Because, basically, you know, it's like saying they're stupid. My kid's stupid, so I don't want them dating someone older. Because These are the just type gonna... of guys that'll tell you to go watch Sound of Freedom. Gotta protect the kids, and then also yep. want to have questionably young girlfriends because of purity make stupid choices because they're dumb <laughs> I mean, what kind of piece of crap parent i prefer them as impure as possible it says that oh yes i would dude i would date an 11 year old nine year old doesn't matter i look in the spiritual aspect of it if i spiritually connect to someone it doesn't matter dude 99 eight a thousand years old it eight doesn't matter. eight eight uh, Eight is you, not a tad bit young. Think ill of me for that. That's on you. I really don't give a shit. So cheers, guys, for being here. Still got 46 in the chat. Yeah, so uh, link right there. 
link right there at pinned to the top of the chat. Go there and retweet this. Ask Team YouTube what the fuck is up because this guy has been doxing me for a week now. And they let him like it. it it's like a chore. They expect me to like watch what he's doing because he doxes me every time he posts a new video. So let's figure out what's going on. We don't want him back either. Let me give me someone's email that you email him when he comes uh, back inevitably too. keep this fucker off of YouTube. Either way. Yeah, unless we can f- actually send him to that son in Minecraft. Exactly. Uh, we are going to check out our boy Cobes on a lighter note. Let's uh, let's go there now. Somewhere in the world today, men have got to stand up strong, face the truth about themselves, to understand what went wrong. I know we can find a way, I know we can find a way, I know we can find a way, stand up, it's amazing. All right, this video is entitled Suck It Trolls. What is up, fellow YouTubers? It's your boy King Cobra back at it with another video. So my YouTube trolls are trying to ruin my cameo by trying to trick me into shouting out disgusting people. Here's the reality of it. I do not know the name of every sicko out there. Because quite frankly, I don't care. So, I hate sickos. As predicted. And I would never pay. Cobra started a cameo, which good for him. But people are trying to get him to say sicko shit all the time on his cameo. I would do it. <laughs> like, he's not endorsing sickos. Hey, make that white stuff come out again. Pay somebody money to do that crap just to fuck with them, you know? And to my YouTube trolls, you know what the fuck you're doing. It's like, oh, Cobra doesn't know the name of every sicko out there, so let's pay him money to shout out some random motherfucker he's never heard of and then trick the message into being like, oh, my friend's doing this and this and this. Could you wish him good luck, blah, blah, blah. Fuck off. In fact, that makes my trolls the sickos because you're paying money for somebody to shout out a sicko. Yeah, sicko no one- trolls. They're pro sicko, right? Like, if you want someone to shout out a sicko, you must be pro sicko, right, Josh? It'd be funny if they just went to the uh, Casper, Wyoming offender registry and just started having him shout out everyone in his neighborhood that was a sicko. <laughs> that would be ridiculous. Stop putting so- that out in the universe, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that person's autistic and he hates sickos. That makes my YouTube trolls the biggest sickos on the planet. Dude. Is his finger okay? Yeah. What is going what on? What is going on? He has, he has his two middle fingers uh, taped together. Oh, my goodness. With, is he getting ready for Naked and Laughing to show up? Is that Are those his fingering fingers? That might be his uh, nuke finger those right are there mine. ready to just blast. I won't lie. Those are mine. <laughs> so, you ever tape them up blue for extra pleasure? Yes. <laughs> I prefer a uh, micro pore tape. <laughs> if you guys are familiar with micro pore tape, though, that's the best finger in finger tape. I'm old school, so I just cover my fingers in candle wax, give it a nice uh, uh, seal, a nice seal of approval. <laughs> Do you put like a stamp in them when the yep. wax is still wet? <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, 
No, I'm I'm, a, I'm obsessed with hating sickos and being a good person, what have you, and fucking these trolls are fucking morons. <laughs> and if Cobra didn't rule your sad life, you wouldn't try this hard to fuck with him. It's a fact. It's a fact. And just because I say these things doesn't make me anything. It's just my trolls are fucking stupid, and the joke's on them, dude. I wonder what broke off the the front teeth like uh, you know, it's part of uh, well i i know what caused it it's smoking smoking and not yeah. brushing your teeth is gonna fuck up your teeth really bad i wouldn't be surprised if I he tried to Cobra use them to open a bottle or something bandages and just uses paper towels and painter's tape huh he's yeah. crafty <laughs> But yeah, if if you smoke, you don't brush your teeth. It will rot out. It, it, he dips too, which will rot out your teeth also. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he like tried to open something using his teeth and it just <sighs> they just disintegrated. Laugh for about five seconds. It's like peanut brittle for teeth. Seconds. Yeah. But I took your money and ran with it, dude. How is that trolling somebody? Because Cobra hates pedophiles. So you pay him cameo money to shout out a person he's never heard the name of? What if Cobra becomes a millionaire because the way he reacts to this monetized trolling just makes more and more people want to troll him? And he just keeps getting cameos and they keep messing with him and he keeps amping it up and before long, he's just like worth a million dollars I could getting trolled? I don't know about a million dollars, but I could easily see him. See, here's the thing. He needs someone to be like... Because the trolling will offend him and he'll want to stop doing it. He needs someone to be like, dude, look how much money you're making. He needs someone to like, be like, no, you, sh you should keep making this because you're owning them by getting rich and successful, you know? Yeah, it, it would be interesting if he like did have a child and he and he. He was able to like put his thing aside because he has to pay for his baby's college. And he's just like, he's like in his heart, it kills him. But he's like, I have to do this for my son, <laughs> uh, Jason <laughs> Faye Saunders. Yeah. Y'all are fucking retarded, dude. <sighs> What's going on with his finger? Did he get attacked by another cat? Because the last time his finger was all taped up was when a cat attacked him. Yeah. People I will go it's out of the from the cat. Like maybe it hasn't healed. If it hasn't healed, then he needs to go to the the ER because that was like two months ago. Did he get a tetanus shot? It, a tetanus shot is not for a cat attack. Okay. A tetanus shot's for like a metal cuts. Oh, what was it? Rabies shot. My bad. Oh, yeah. Uh, normally, you wouldn't get a rabies shot unless you have rabies as a human. Okay. Yeah, like, uh, and, and it's a very painful process. Like, it, it's actually like multiple shots. Toxoplasmosis uh, got brought up. <laughs> I, yeah, maybe. He, maybe he has toxoplasmosis. A fucking way to bully me for anything. And they know I hate pedophiles and sickos and shit like that, so of course they're going to try as hard as they can to fuck with me on it. And honestly, it's disgusting. It really is. If I had a YouTuber that I did not like or I hated their videos, I would not pay them money to shout out sickos just to fuck with them because if I don't like a YouTuber, I don't watch. There you go. Uh... We're going to roll into the next video here. This, here's a food review from our boy, King Cobra. What is up, YouTube? So I did this food review earlier of the new Arby's brown sugar bacon sandwich. And I got the roast beef version. They got two versions of it. One is just lettuce, tomatoes, and brown sugar bacon. It's really delicious, I'm sure. And the other version is, is the one I did earlier, which is the uh, roast beef version, which came with all of that, plus some of their classic roast beef and a slice of cheese. Nice. And to that sandwich, I added two horsey packets and a cup of their cheese sauce. And I ordered a large uh, peach lemonade and a large curly fries to go with it. I did not finish the curly fries or the lemonade from the last time I did it. 
and I fucked up the food review, so I'm going to redo it by reordering the sandwich, and I reordered the sandwich, and they gave me the regular BLT version instead of the roast beef one that I ordered, but it's all good. Ah, oh, boo. And to both sandwiches, I added two packets of horsey sauce and one cup of their delicious ooey-gooey cheese. So we're going to set the camera down, and we're going to eat this sandwich for you real quick. Give you the scoop. So he's got and double horsey and cheese added to it. This is going to be sloppy. I love horsey sauce because, like, I love that horseradish burn. And to put yeah, on extra... Uh, I, I prefer remember actual it, horseradish, but it, it, it is not bad. Yeah, yeah. I remember, like, as a kid going to Arby's uh, when they only... They didn't have gimmicky sandwiches. It was just, like, sliced roast beef sandwiches. And you had Arby sauce, which is really good. I love that's like a smoky, tangy kind of sauce, and then yeah. and then hor uh, horsey sauce, which is like a horseradish, creamy horseradish. Cobra sauce. looks like the living man after he took meth. I am the living man. I do not subscribe to your corporate fiction. I forgot <laughs> about that guy. Yep. <laughs> They, you see how, they do a bronco berry sauce at Arby's that goes really well with their jalapeno poppers. If anybody's feeling quirky and so, with a little heat and sweet. So, yeah, I was just going to ask you. So berry, it's like fruity. It's like a fruity sauce. Yeah. yeah. yeah sugar it goes really well with the jalapeno poppers, cream cheese and everything. It like sweetens up the spice from the, pe the popper. And, and uh, they might have given me the wrong version. The second time that I ordered it, but they did not skimp on the uh, extra brown sugar bacon, so I appreciate that. That's a lot of bacon. What do you people think? Look at that. That's a hunk of bacon, dude. Delicious, delicious, oh tasty cross section. And I'm not complaining because Arby's, your uh, brown sugar bacon sandwiches are delicious. And like I said, this is a... Uh... The bun looks sad. And actually, I I learned today, like... Or I, I didn't learn it, but I, I did some research today. W depending on where you are in the country, your bread is, uh, like, locally baked. Like, Franz <laughs> here... Franz is located in Soto. Like, their main bakery is in Soto. You won't get Franz where I grew up. We had another bakery making the bread and the buns and everything. Um, it, when I worked at Wendy's in Ohio, it was Nichols Bakery, which is like a Midwestern bakery. Hmm. So it's weird. So, like, technically, you know, if you buy fast food out here, the, the, the bun you get is technically done by a different bakery than what you'd get out west. But they still get, like, a specific recipe and, like, pans and everything to bake it in to specification. We need, we need a YouTuber to figure out regionally which areas have different bread makers and then do a taste test and fly to every Wendy's region and see who has the best locally sourced bread at all the Wendy's and then do it for every other fast food place. Somebody get out there and do it right now. Buy plane tickets. I want to. I want to know. I'm I grew. There. I grew up with plain white bread as my main bread as a kid, which I think most kids from like late eighties, early nineties did. God damn it! Yeah. The bacon slipped out. Stay in there. You think you are so cute jumping out of the sandwich? God damn it! Damn it! We we, uh, <laughs> we had bunny bread where I grew up. And I, hmm. I looked it up today, and it's a Midwestern thing. It was it was almost like yeah, Wonder, Wonder bread. bread was like the main white bread. We had Wonder Bread, and I think that was like nationwide. Actually, Columbus has that big neon uh, Wonder Bread sign, just like Seattle does. Um, but uh, the cheap bread that my mom would buy at the grocery store was Bunny Bread. It was called Bunny Bread, which I guess. Still exists, but you can't find it, you know, on the West Coast at all. But yeah, yeah, I've never seen that bread. Yeah, bunny bread. It had like a bun. It's cute, though. Yeah. Yeah, bunny bread. Making a Buster Baxter sandwich <laughs> with bunny bread? <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What's that bunny shape loaf over there? Okay, that's, that's not sick. made by the actual bunny bread bakery. Well, I mean, that's like. cute as hell. That's just part of the. So, like, this is bunny bread, you know, like in a loaf. Yeah. If anyone else is from the Midwest, let me know if you had bunny bread at some point. BLT, bacon, lettuce, tomato situation. And it comes with two versions, just your Situation. regular lettuce, tomatoes, and bacon, like this one, or like the one I had earlier, which is the roast beef and cheese version. And the roast beef and cheese version, in my opinion, is better because you get more meat. I see you all saying they had the meat, bunny bread. Motherfucker. But I digress. Yeah, you obviously get more meat when you put uh, roast beef on there, but holy shit, that is a lot of bacon. That is a lot, lot of bacon. Simple Country has bunny bread in his pantry right now, actually. What? Yeah, because he's from, like, uh, West Virginia, Tucky. So that's, yeah, that's that same region, basically. Delicious man's or what? bunnied up. I think it looks delicious. He's got I'm this to buy glob it, of horsey at the bottom of this sandwich that I feel like is just going to get... It's Robin or, or rubbed across something. He's about to leave a, a slug trail of horsey sauce the way he's moving this burger around. It's globbing. Like, hold up. By the way, Bunny Bread headquartered out of Navarre, Ohio, just outside of Canton. I heard the roast beef Navarre. version. Look, I had this morning. Yeah, what do you do? <laughs> what do you do? You grub. Mmm. I have no idea how long Arby's is going to have this on their menu, but I recommend it. Both sandwiches, I asked for extra bacon on that brown sugar bacon action, and they definitely delivered on that. The version I had earlier had the roast beef on it, which was really good with that cheese. And then I added two horsey sauce packets and a cup of their nacho cheese. Is, is it nacho? I thought it was cheddar. And this, for I I would if someone was like, "What cheese do you put in nacho, nacho cheese? cheese?" I would say cheddar's one of them. Maybe Colby, I'll, like Colby Jack, too, because there it is. What there, there are some white cheese I would put into like if you if you ask about like Mexican cheese. You know. Yeah, they'll do queso blanco for a, a nacho cheese sometimes. Yeah, but uh, but th that's got a bunch of other stuff in it. I'm, I thought Arby's cheddar was just like, or, or their cheese sauce was just cheddar. Because when you order a beef and cheddar, it's got that cheese sauce it, instead of like a slice of anything. They use that cheese sauce and they call it a beef and cheddar. Yeah. Version they gave me the regular BLT version, so I guess I'll get to try both versions today. The one I had earlier was pretty good. And when I fucked up on the review, I thought, you know what? We'll just reorder the sandwich. They got and these uh, animals here on this burger box. There's a cow. There's a pig. There's a turkey. There's a chicken. And then there's a fish. Yeah. And they offer they offer all those animals at Arby's. Do they? You can get a sandwich with all that on it. Yeah, they got fish sandwich, turkey sandwich, chicken. Huh. They got ham, bacon, and beef. That wasn't how make... Arby's was back in the day. It was only like like shaved roast beef, right? Thin yeah, slice roast beef. I, I think they might have also did ham huh. uh, the same way. I think they had two different meats. This this might have been later on, too, because I was, uh, you know, born in the 80s. Yeah. I'm sure Arby's has been around longer. No, yeah. I remember being a kid in the late 80s, and our local Arby's had that sign that was like the giant neon cowboy hat. Yeah, and it, and it was all <laughs> as far as I remember, it was all like roast beef sandwich. So, yeah, I I thought they had like one ham and Swiss option, beef and cheddar and ham and Swiss as a kid. I, I might have been I, I might be misremembering, though, too. We weren't big on Arby's because it was uh, cheaper to just buy a Godfather's pizza. Yeah, it was more there was more food on a Godfather's pizza. So we when we would go out for bullshit 
And the Godfathers was right up the road from the Arby's. I was so it'd really take a lot to get Arby's. It was weird in my neighborhood. We had several local pizzerias that were cheaper, like which is weird. Local, you wouldn't think. Nowadays, it's not cheaper than the chains, but we had like cheaper local pizzerias that were like undercutting Godfathers and uh, Little Caesars and all that shit. Yeah, I think those big. Uh companies would stomp those places out. So you were probably getting the last bastion of hope for these family businesses that were trying to compete. A lot of, a lot of the ones I grew up with still exist like 30 years later. It's crazy. Well, like, like Toledo is just, they, they just have like a pizza culture. It, it's, it's really weird. It's same thing with uh like chili dogs. It's a, it's a, it's an institution. Uh, just eat some of Yeah, we really don't see a lot of those around here. No. Curly fries and call it a review, I guess. Mm. But we have teriyaki in Seattle. We're teriyaki, like teriyaki is, kings here. Teriyaki is the signature Seattle dish, as far as I've seen. Um, and then there's, you know, like seaside food, like chowder and oysters and that kind of shit. Yeah. Look at that. YouTube, look at all that... Extra bacon on there with the brown sugar goodness. It's so much bacon. I like Arby's horsey Here's sauce. It's basically you. I got Korean fired chicken today, and I oh, don't yeah. know how they fry it the way they do, but it's crazy. Koreans it's super good. are so good at food. So good. A horseradish. Yeah, if you have a Korean fried chicken place around you, I think Bok Bok is a chain now. They go around a lot of places. If you haven't had Korean fried chicken... I recommend it. Uh, there's there's some that put like a little red sweet and fi uh, spicy sauce on it. That's, That's really Korean good. Korean sauce. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I I like Chai Mac. You know Chai Mac or Chi Mac, however you say it. It's a it sounds like Chili Mac to me. Is that a chicken? It it's a Korean chicken. Uh, yeah, Chili Mac is like what you get in Cincinnati on top of spaghetti. <laughs> right? But right? no, no, no. It's it's a chain. There's one here in Bellevue, and there's one in the on the Ave in the U District. Huh. Um, it, it's really good. Like uh, me and Scott went to one one time. It's it's probably the best Korean wing place I've been to in the area here. Um, it's pretty spot on, and they do a lot of like dry rub. They snow wings. Oh my god. Some of the most yeah, snow wings are great. Yes. Delicious. It's not too spicy. It's got like a little bit of sweetness to it. And then it boom, it hits you with that heat. Mmm. The I'm sounds of this sandwich ah. are hearty. <laughs> it sounds like he's eating pussy, right? Like I, uh, that's a rough <laughs> sound for pussy. <laughs> that's a well, rough sound. think about whose pussy he was eating. Just a second, <laughs> like <laughs> I hope it was <laughs> <laughs> because I already had one earlier. Oh, but we got a couple bites in on camera for you. Show you a close up of the goods. Mm. Yeah, like. Like, close your eyes and pretend he's just eating pussy. Just going to finish this later. Can't. I can't do I'm it. Just going to finish this later. <laughs> but yes, the new Arby's Macaroni brown sugar in the bacon pot. King's Hawaiian bun sandwich. So it's, it's got a King's, King's Hawaiian bun. That's why it looks all wrinkled. Those those things are hard to keep uh, bouncy. You know, it's true because they're they're a sweet bun. I bought uh, some of that Snake River Farms uh, American Wagyu uh, ground beef and made my own Hawaiian sliders on those. That's yeah. like chef's kiss. It, it's easy, easy recipe. You know, this is bar in Tacoma that is like a huge drink menu. It's um a, a, a HP Lovecraft theme bar. It's called Devil's Reef, I've and been they there. do this Portuguese. Yeah, they do this Portuguese hot dog there. And it's on the, the the Hawaiians' own buns. There's like four of them connected, and that's the bun for this foot long Portuguese dog. It's so good. I didn't have any food there, but me and my buddy were like, "Oh, you're gonna have a five skull? Well, I'm gonna have a six skull drink." And right? then by the end of the night, we're like blacked out, trying to find like our way back to the hotel. 
Yeah, it's nuts. It's a great place. The more skulls on the menu, the stronger the drink. And there's like the lowest one is like two skulls. And then there's like six skulls, which is like you finish it and you're fucking wasted. And the drink menu is maybe like upwards of almost 100 drinks. It's ridiculously yes. yep. long. There's so many that's, big skull drinks. That's the best bar in downtown Tacoma. And I brought my friend who's from New York City there, and he was really yeah. disappointed. Like, because we like we got a hotel in downtown Tacoma because we were going to a concert in Tacoma. Yeah, it was like a multiple day festival in Tacoma, and and we were staying there. And he was like, "Wow, I like I actually thought Tacoma might be." He said Tacoma is like Toledo, and I've said this forever. Tacoma is basically Toledo. T Town, <laughs> the Glass City, it's it's literally the same thing. It makes it makes a lot of sense. Yep. It, it, they're about as far apart from Seattle to Columbus too, aren't they? Uh or is Toledo a little further. Toledo to Detroit is like the the same thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, about the same distance. Hawaiian Columbus uh, Toledo to Columbus is like uh like three and a half hours by car. Arby's oh, brown okay, sh- never mind. Yeah. Sugar bacon sandwich. I've now officially tried both versions. The one with the roast beef and the slice of cheese, you get more meat, which obviously is gonna taste a lot better, but <laughs> that's Oh! oh no! That's something that him and Jared both do that they have in common. They fart in their videos. He's bum- he's farting on his own food right now. By <laughs> the way, he's farting right into where he's about to turn he's, back around and eat. He's blowing fecal matter all over. Because by the way, surprise, surprise. The reason farts smell is because there's shit in the gas that you're blowing <laughs> out of your ass. <laughs> That's that's definitely not what's up, Tubes. No. Got some zest to Arby's. I told these trolls oh. to suck my ass crap. Was that clapping? Yes. Fucking told them. <laughs> oh, god damn it. <laughs> he sat oh. right back down in it. Oh! oh it smells like Asperger's, dude. Good grief. <laughs> <laughs> and now I've tried both versions, and this oh one's pretty good, God. too, because like I said, I asked for extra bacon on both of my sandwiches, and they definitely did not oh. skimp on that. I could have clicked the wrong button, or maybe they were just out of the ingredients to make make it. I don't know. A guy's about to get have, pink eye. That's up my order. It is what it is. I'm not complaining. But, yes, if you have not tried the Arby's... Brown sugar. Ba- I've made BLTs packed with bacon like that, you know. But is it only? Yeah. Is bacon the only meat on this sandwich, or like? Yeah, yeah. Because he, I think okay. he said he ordered the other one, but they sent him just the bacon version. Okay. Bacon sandwiches. I've, I've ordered a baconator at Wendy's, and they in the app you're allowed to do five times Ooh. Uh, extra bacon on top of it, and I did that one time, and it was. More bacon than that, but it was uh, it was ridiculous. It was good though. They are delectable, YouTube, to say the least. Delectable. I would say like the part of the reason why tomato is good on a bacon sandwich is because it's so bland. It kind of offsets the uh, extremely salty bacon. Yeah, it gives a good oh, bacon or uh, tomato is really good with salt on it. If you're going to put it on a sandwich anyways, I usually you salt, salt your bacon tomato because <laughs> American bacon, dude, I went to this farmer's market in France when I was there and had a tomato and it was the most tasty tomato I've ever had in my life, like pure <laughs> organic kind of shit, which we don't even get here. I, I had a strawberry that tasted like it was like marinated in sugar, but it was just like a natural strawberry. Our strawberries are all white. Like you bite in a strawberry, there's like white in it. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So I, I actually experienced like delicious produce. But yeah, like tomatoes, like they offset the like extremely salty bacon part. The laws are different in Europe. Like, you can't get away with a lot of the stuff we get away with in the U.S. with our yeah, food. It's true. Yep. Mm-hmm. 
My guy is eating a whole last trough burger here. There is so much wetness. Danny Million says Pike Place has decent strawberries. They're yeah, decent. I bet, you there's, I bet you there's a lot of places you could go and find better stuff. Um, it's it not like what that, I had in Europe, but yes. Yeah, it, I've shopped there. Sucks that you have to search for stuff like that. Yeah, I uh, like I've 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 gone to Pike Place with a cooler to like buy fresh fish and all kinds of good shit. Like there's good shit there. But it's still it doesn't compare to a place that just grows things without I I, I hate it cuz I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist, but like the non-GMO foods, like the pure foods like that yeah i mean it, w america is very much set up for a consumerist society that's just the way we're built and it's it's it doesn't benefit these companies to give uh the best quality stuff yes just it, it's all about quantity here in america yep. but if i live near pike place i would shop there for most of my groceries because everything there is pure like fresh especially the seafood if you like seafood you know, like a lot of the oysters and clams are straight out of the water, even like that yeah. same day. I, I should search for farmers markets. That, that would be a good. We thing had to one do in Columbus. We had one in Columbus, uh, the North Market. Actually, like if you go to any market, it's kind of they're just trying to emulate Pike Place. Pike Place kind of set the standard for a, like a public market. Um, there, there's one in Vancouver I've been to on uh, Granville Island that's very similar to Pike Place. So, Pike Place, it, it's crazy. They wanted to tear that place down and turn it into a parking garage. <laughs> Did you know that? It was before uh, you were born. Yeah, um, I can believe that. Yeah, they like in the 70s, they wanted to tear down Pike Place and turn it into a parking garage because. They thought it was an eyesore, all the old buildings. Uh, urban renewal ruined a lot of cities because there was this attitude yeah. where they were like, these old buildings are ugly, tear them down and build new buildings. Well, now we look at these old buildings and we're like, well, maybe they're old, but we can fix them. So they rebuild them from the inside and leave the outside, you know, so... I, yeah. You know, I didn't even realize this. Did you know Elvis filmed a movie in Seattle during the 62 World's Fair? The, yeah. It, it yeah. happened at the, it's called It Happened at the World's Fair. I've never yeah, seen it. Yeah, a big deal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because that, I mean, like, you can see the, what what was called Key Arena or the Coliseum or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Now called Climate Pledge. But that's, like, part of the whole movie. It's kind of cool. Yeah. That World's Fair was a big deal. It was. It was. Uh, it was. It was huge for like Seattle, but it was huge for the world. Um, the World's Fairs used to be really big. We America doesn't Fair have them Seattle. anymore. They still have them in China yeah. and other parts of the world, but uh, I don't we think stopped we having bid them. for them. We don't bid for them anymore. No. I don't know if our infrastructure even cares. The you, I, you know, two years later, the '64 uh, World's Fair that was in New York, and a lot of those structures still exist in Queens. It was in Queens, hmm. and uh, a lot of it, – it's crazy. You, you, Because we still – in Seattle, all those structures, we still use them. The, you know, the, mu the, the science museum, the arena, the, uh, even the, foot, the, the, the outdoor stadium there they, they use, you know, uh, and the yeah. monorail and everything. But if you go to where they had the 64 World's Fair in New York – in Queens, it's all just like dilapidating, and they have this giant oh. globe. All these structures are are just kind of like out in the middle of nowhere, falling apart now. Sad. Yeah, it, it's pretty insane. I'm gonna try both versions. And it's a good sandwich in general. I see someone say they look like abandoned spaceships. Yeah. Yeah, I, I watched a video where someone went to the site. They have one of the world's largest globes there because they built it for the World's Fair, 64, and it's still there, and you can still go and walk like around I'm not there. complaining. But I definitely recommend it. 
They're both good in my opinion. That brown sugar bacon is pretty tasty. It's sweet, it's salty, it's got a little bit of crispiness to it. Kind of wish I hadn't messed up the review I did earlier, but that's whatever. <laughs> I'm sold. If I wasn't uh, no, going to die from eating all this salt, I'd go get one right now. Both versions, good, and they're pretty good. Good sandwich. They're pretty good, YouTube. I'll close that up, stick it in the fridge for later, because I, like I said, I already had one earlier, so I'm pretty full. But it's all good. Josh. Do you eat bacon? Would you eat that sandwich? Probably not. He put a lot of extra in there. So. Yeah. And then it was like also like kind of wet sounding. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of horsey but sauce yeah, and cheddar you, sauce. You have got to try the new Arby's okay. brown sugar bacon sandwiches. Josh, how much money for you to eat that sandwich? Oh, not much. Like if you're paying me, not much money. Yeah, how much? Like, like, like. Probably 20 bucks? just give me the sandwich for free and I'll eat it. Okay. Like, <laughs> then, then how much am I to eat that sandwich directly after he farted on it? <laughs> I'd say a hundred bucks. That's oh not bad. God. No, not at all. It's not bad at all. I'm a cheap whore. It's fine. <laughs> Speed and you get a little bit of a sandwich and a hundred dollar bill. Yeah. That's that's what I was thinking, man. I get a sandwich. Ridiculous. The hundred's just, you know, special, you know, <laughs> which comes with lettuce, tomatoes and bacon. And the sauce they put on it. Do you think, okay, do you think Josh, while having sex with Jessica, do you think he farts? Yes. I think, I they think both she fart farts and too. And they'll laugh about it. Oh, God. Do you think. Uh, nah, I'm not going to ask it. She's sucking his dick and he farts. <laughs> Plus, some of their roast beef. I knew what you were going to say. Think, <laughs> you think he did it? Do you think he did it? Yes. That's a wrong. Oh, this oh, has some shorts. like white cheese. Or that would make some BL good mead. Oh, tea version, it don't matter. No, this drink here, this peach oh. lemonade. These are the fries from the last order that I messed up on the review. So there you go. Mm. Arby's makes the best curly fries. Mm-hmm. Arby's makes the best fast food fries, in my opinion. I love, love Arby's curly fries. I wonder if he's got a Jack in the Box near him, because I think their curly fries are better. They're very then, similar. Then they, then they got this delicious peach lemonade. Oh, that's good. Reach over into my uh, other cup here, because I got some coconut rum. <laughs> All right. There you go. Cheers. His cup looks like a spittoon. Those copper Anyways, cups. You too. Spittoon. He just washed it. I've now officially tried both <laughs> oh, versions of that sandwich. The first time I did it was the roast beef version. And I messed up on the review, so I deleted it. But the second time I did it, I must have ordered the wrong sandwich by mistake, but that's okay. I got to try both versions. Overall, really tasty sandwich. Arby's is not a sponsor. Thank you for watching. There you go. A man endorses the sandwiches. Hell yeah, dude. Here's a drink combo from Cobra. What the fuck is up, YouTube? It's your boy Cobra back at it with another drink combo. Alex Vicknair hooked me up with this big ass goblet. And I'm thinking we're gonna have to do a drink combo to uh, break it in. We're gonna start off with some Monster Ultra Paradise. I mean, look at the size of this goblet. That is ridiculously coming That's like a use. full Stein, right? Yeah. Got a cobra on the it's like a liter. Back. It's like a full liter glass. I thought he had his two fingers taped up. That's only one finger taped up. Oh. It looked like two when it was close up earlier. Is this going to be a nice St. Patrick's Day color? 
Goldie FX like says all three monsters in there. It looks like they'll fit. Goldie FX says he's going to break that goblet within a year. I, I think I would break it within a year, too. That looks a little flimsy. That was one whole monster. Monster juice, mucha, mango, mango mm. loco. Okay, this is going to turn out brown, right? 100%. Don't like swamp water. No. Huh? It's, oh, like oh no, no, no. Oh, it's man. getting brown. It's getting brown. Little, little milky. It's brown. It's brown. Uh, it yeah, is brown. It's brown. I, I now, thought. It looks like a, an amber? Yeah. Then we're going to add this some one's peach. Uh, Monster Ultra Peach. It makes me have to pee. <laughs> now he's going to top it off with some rum haven. That's like three cans of monster in that cup. But you know, let's have a sniff. That smells tropical. You know what we're going to add to that next? Some rum haven coconut rum. This is white rum made with Real coconut water and pure cane sugar. Spank it to wake the demons. <laughs> and we're gonna have so you got to do ketchup bottles too. To the top of our combo. Splash it in there. <laughs> this is this is a big ass drink. He should. Last stir man up. says he thinks. <laughs> Last man says he thinks that's healthy. When has Cobra ever, ever had health in mind? Never. That is a crazy looking drink. What's on his fridge? Do you see that shit back there? Oh, man. I wish we could zoom. Um, Death. I see Josh. I see Dear Josh. I think Jessica might have written that. It, yeah, it's written in girly handwriting. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. Yeah, they're in she love, dude. Like, they it's are. in fecal matter. Even though Josh won't say he loves her. Drink combo, folks. Would you look at that? That smells tropically delicious. Yes, folks. We are doing a drink combo out of this mm. beautiful goblet courtesy of... Alex Vickner. With the King Cobra handle. That thing looks Even flimsy, dude. A drinking straw with it. So let me just uh, grab it. Yeah, I'd be cupping the bottom of that, that shit. Real quick. Maybe it's strong, but when you add all that liquid to it, it I wouldn't be surprised if the damn thing just broke. I, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if it was designed to break and he made this to troll Cobra. You know what? Uh, I'm going into Seattle tomorrow for St. Pat's Day, and I do love corned beef and cabbage, but I'm thinking I might celebrate St. Patrick's Day with some fat shack instead. <laughs> I'm Get thinking. A, I wonder if they'll do a Patty's Day special, like if a they'll corned, do a corned beef? beef and cabbage sandwich. With fries and... Uh, <laughs> mozzarella sticks on it too yeah, they'll, they'll have like twice baked potatoes inside of the sun bitch <laughs> that would be actually yeah like corned beef cabbage and like twice baked potato or like potato pancakes or something in it yeah this is a drink which by the way if you're irish it's called box tea drinking straw he made out of glass Boxty. this is not for dabbing this is for drinking oh wow drinks. I want to. I want to see him a little bit. I want to see him sip this damn thing. Bottoms up, Cobes. That is a cool. Like it's cool that he has this. Yeah, I hope it doesn't break. Ooh, he's not gonna wash it though. That's the problem. Yeah, that drink combo is fire, <laughs> son. Look at that. Yeah. It is St. Patrick's Day weekend. 
And I hope you're all having a beautiful, beautiful, I hope everyone has a good St. Patty's Day. Objectively, let's look back at the last five years or so we've been watching King Cobra. Four or five years. It's been, it's been a minute. Yeah. Is this the best time of Cobra's life since yes. we've been watching him? Yes. He's, yes. he's at the peak right now. Objectively, yes. <laughs> Fuck sickos. Fuck the YouTube trolls. This is a glass drinking straw, which is better for the environment because it's not made out of plastic. It ain't gonna fucking. This, this straw looks uncomfortable to drink out of. Like, but may, maybe it's perfect. It looks cool as hell. Shrivel up because it's made out of paper. <laughs> It's such a goofy like way you gotta drink it just because of the the gigantic size. I wanted to break that drinking straw in. Works like a champ. There you go. Give him some sweet cobra kisses. And if to you the don't drink like the combo, baby. That you're seeing, one second. Be sure to check out. Alex Fickner Glass on Instagram. And if you want a glass pipe or a big old glass mug or whatever. You want some glass artwork like this amazing drinking straw, this big ass drinking cup. Like, look at this. The handle is a giant cobra. Look at the size of this drinking mug. That is insane, dude. <sighs> We're definitely going to add some more rum to it when it gets down to a certain level. Then you know what to do. Hit up Alex Vickner and he'll, uh, Name a price and uh, he'll hook you up. There you go. It'd be awesome if the f the handle was also the straw. <laughs> yes. Fire, yeah. That would have been dope. Very hard to wash, I'm sure. <sighs> that drink combo is fire, son. I want to drink it down to a certain point, and then we're going to top it off with some more of that rum. It'll give you a caffeine buzz that'll rock your world. <laughs> That's three. Was it monsters? Yeah. Is it three monsters if you like in the there? Wild drink three combos, full monsters, subscribe yeah. for more. Three full monsters, this, uh, and then glass straw back up so it's safe. rum, coconut rum. Rum of which he intends to add more to. It's wild. Oh, you gotta keep adding rum. You gotta refill. This is gonna. The whole bottle needs to go in there. <laughs> Casually. Take a look at this beautiful glass, YouTube. That is most definitely what the fuck is up. He's had a good swig off that thing yeah. already. Yeah, never yep. get my uh, Friday, Saturday started. At least half a monster's uh -uh. worth of liquid pulled out of it. <clears throat> it's bubbling over here. He is holding the bottom of that thing even because that's just a monster. It's a huge drink. This glass is comedically large, and I'm yes. here for it. <laughs> I move the chair over. I wonder if this guy could make, like, a, a bottle to sell mead in. Like a, a cool Cobra Craft bottle to sell, sell Cobra mead.
But like I said, you hit up whew, Alex Fickner if you want a bitchin' weed pipe or a dab rig. I need a bitchin' you know, weed bottle. Drinking glass. Alex Fickner's glass kicks ass. He's a solid friend of mine. He's also a fan of my YouTube. And he does do live streams where he blows his glass, so check that out. And subscribe to his YouTube channel. And if you like seeing me do wicked drink combos out of this gigantic jug of goodness, hit the like. Subscribe for more. And fuck sickos. Hey, yo. Rob in the chat says apparently Monster is 86 milligrams caffeine and the max that. daily dose is 400 All these milligrams YouTube caffeine. Trolls who are trying to pay me to shout out sickos. That makes them the sicko, dude. Like, sit there. I, I know, we're going to bully an autistic person for hating sickos because we're losers. Just keep getting paid. Absolute losers. Buy that. A lot of big have been covering. Uh, you're breaking up a lot, dude. Uh, yeah, a lot of. A lot of bigger channels have been covering King Cobra lately. So it's very interesting to see where this goes. This could blow him up. Can't really taste it in there very much, can you? Here comes more <laughs> rum. Oh my god. It's happening. Now we're cooking with fire, folks. Booyah Kasha. Booyah Kasha, 619. Now this drink combo has <laughs> three monsters in it and one whole bottle of rum. Oh, oh he just cracked that one, too. Now yep. we're cooking with oh fire, my God. folks. That's a whole fifth, dude. Throughout the day. What a monster. Let's see how that swings. This glass is heavy now. Look at that. You gotta work out while you're sipping. <laughs> yeah. Halfway through that, he's gonna get too drunk to hold it, right? You, you can use the straw at that point. True. Ah, that's mixed just right. <laughs> He's getting wasted. <laughs> it's a good mix because the monster will keep him awake. <laughs> yeah. Cheers, folks. Cheers to the Gothic King Cobra. Josh, as a fellow Josh, do you. Do you identify with any of King Cobra's traits? Oh, me and him have way more in common than I'm proud to admit. <laughs> What's one thing that you'll, like a, a very juicy thing that you'll admit that you have in common with King Cobra? Oh, I'm missing teeth. 100%. Ah, uh, that's <laughs> fair. Yeah, I was hoping for something, something a little more, more juicier. A little more juicy, like you eat your own farts on accident. <laughs> <laughs> it's not accidental. <laughs> I uh, I definitely um like in my heart of hearts, his food hacks are things that I I'm not they're not too far off of fat things I've done because I'm I'm like a fat right. That, I, I mean do, that's a hundred percent. I I yeah. I've definitely put Doritos on things that don't need Doritos. You know yeah, it's just easy. One of my favorite food hacks from back in the day. I would get um, a, a hot dog bun. I would get like a Johnsonville bratwurst. I would put it in a hot dog bun and I'd cover it with canned chili and I would put like uh Frito uh, chili cheese Fritos on top of it. Then I would cover it with onions and then I would cover it with uh, like three craft single slices. Then I would microwave it and just have this dumb ass chili dog. It that was actually so sounds good. so bomb. Dude, it was nuts. I was my that was one of my fat boy things to do. 
God, that sounds really good. I, I used to love adding like chips to sandwiches. I would do like a, I'd get potato bread, potato chips, turkey cheese, and just make like a, a extra potato salad. I'd have like three levels of potato on a sandwich. I would do, I would do nut stuff. I feel hey, like I'm not doing it right. Just hearing all that white stuff come out again. Is that is that horsey sauce? Yep. <laughs> make that white stuff come out again. So Ben, you was, got a big you got a big St. Patrick's Day plan tomorrow. Are you uh are, are are you are you are you thinking it's gonna be one of those super drinking days? Oh is yeah. it always that way? <laughs> well yes. <laughs> it's St. Patrick's Day, right? Yes. Well, what do you do to prepare for like a super day of drinking? There's two main <laughs> drinking holidays, I, I would say St. Patrick's Day and Cinco de Mayo. And like your drinking theme is very different because yeah. uh, Cinco de Mayo, it's all like tequila themed. If you've ever had a vampiro, if you've ever had like those kind of drinks. Yeah, it, it's all like tequila and mezcal based. Uh, but when it comes to St. Patrick's Day, usually it's beer and whiskey. Yeah. Um, yes. And I do have a plan. And hopefully I'll remember all of it. Do you eat a big meal before you start drinking just to have your stomach filled? Or do you go in empty and and work your way through the day? I go in empty. (laughs) That's That's how you get the full experience. Yeah. Yeah. So I've never I've never been a holiday drinker. I've definitely had like days where I just binge drink, but they were never like based around a holiday. They were just like, today sucks. I'm going out for a drink and I'm not stopping until I puke. Tomorrow, I'm probably going to do an IRL stream live from this channel. Uh, yeah, so dude. don't miss it. <sighs> okay, we're going to go into something else. Uh Let's do it. Oh, hold on. No, no, no. There's a food review. What is up, fellow YouTubers? So, I did an order from Little Squeezers. Ah! (laughs) Is this all the same uh, day? Pepperoni puffs. It can't be the same day. It's just the same shirt, right? (laughs) But I ordered two cups of garlic butter to go with it, and I did not receive said two cups of garlic butter so i did a refund for the missing garlic butter cups that'll show up in my account in the next couple of days it is what it is the whole purpose of this order was to put some food in my belly and then do a review of the little caesar's pepperoni crazy puffs (sighs) <sighs> Nothing you can do about it, YouTube. The restaurant could have been out of garlic butter or they just simply ignored my request. And it's like, if you're out, fucking put a note or something and be, let, let the dasher know, hey, we're out of the dipping sauce. You know, communication. You have one job. It's not that difficult. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. My man so loves his garlic cr- butter too. Yes. He drinks it. Yes, he'll straight up take a shot of garlic butter sauce. Crazy pops. Danny, Danny Million suggests that the, the DoorDasher drank the garlic butter on the ride there. I mean, how can you resist? <laughs> From Little Caesars. Look at that. There's four of them. What are right those? There. I've had their Italian cheesy breads, delicious. The whole reason I ordered this is so I could try these uh, these things right here, the Little Caesars Puffs deal. Puffs? Little pizza cupcakes? And I missed my God. lizard terribly. This is oh. a coincidence on the name. But let's try some. Coincidence on the name. Roni. He just said coincidence the on the name. <laughs> Ripperoni puff. Look at that cross section. All right. All right. 
You see the cheese and the pepperoni? Yeah, it's like a bagel bite, basically. Yeah, do they charge more than five bucks for that? Yeah, that's so the issue. Morning in- so I doubt it. That's the question. Really? The middle. You know when you get those, I don't think like, I'd pay five bucks for four of those. I, I think that would be a ripoff even. Yeah, but. buy some bagel bites. You'll get like eight of them. Juma says three ninety nine. That's a reasonable price. If they're three ninety nine, that's reasonable. It's yeah, uh, Caesar's gimmick. Pizza bagel bites. They're like giant circles and they're like little pizza bites. That's basically what this is. These are like the pizza bagel bites. Like little Caesars took their uh their pepperoni and their pizza toppings and made it miniature sized. And I ordered two garlic cups to go with it so I could smear it all over the top of these little pizza puff things. <gasps> and try it for you. Was his thumbnail cobras. like really big? Yes. It's like stab you and scrape the shit out of you kind of level. Oh, look at that fucking thing. It's yellow. Uh-huh. 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 I'm not going to lie to you, too. I love having this long thumbnail. Yeah, I think even at $4, I'd rather just buy uh, pizza. I think I'd rather just right. have a slice of pizza than that. I agree. Because I wanted to take the, the two cups of garlic butter and just smear it all over the top of these uh, crazy puffs deal. I'm with him. I'm with but, him on this one. Those things do look like they need some garlic butter on top of them. Little dry. Garlic butter slaps, too. It does. It's not the That's worst not going to happen. I usually make it with lemon zest in it. Is that That's like, just like the, the lemon rind shaved in? Yep, yep. And, and like baked into it. And then Is garlic the butter sock. just like garlic confit or whatever? Hmm. No, well, I don't think I don't think I know what confit is. Confit is when they force they... feed a duck to have a fatty liver. So no, that's like foie gras, no? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. thought it was foie gras. Oh yeah, yeah. That is foie gras. Confit is just like something marinated in butter and then like you're right. Cooked and you're right. In the fridge to mash it up. Yeah. Okay. Huh. All right. We got the uh, like I said, crazy cheesy Italian bread right there. Look at that. Fresh order of that. It is what it is. YouTube. DoorDash was nice enough to give me a refund for the missing items. So it's like I a dollar, right? That I'd be thing. pissed if I wanted my garlic butter with this, and now I have to eat it without garlic butter. Thank you, not a sponsor. I get every time. But it's like you have one. Job. I want a refund because the only thing that tastes good you withheld from me. Dude, right? If you're out of I the, need uh, that. Garlic. I need that to just wet my mouth. There's no. There's no wet ass pussy sound when he eats this. I, would I know. The whole meal. How hard I know how much he misses that wetness. DoorDash or no? Hey, you know what? We're out of said product. So could you let the customer who ordered this know that we don't have it? Like a note or something. Yeah, Danny you know Millions says it's like the cinnamon sticks without frosting. The, uh, That's straight Italian up. If I got cinnamon bread. sticks with no frosting. I didn't get Cinestics. That's what I was going to say about the pizza, too. I wouldn't fucking eat the pizza, so I'd refund the whole fucking thing. Yeah, this is sad. I actually feel very bad for Cobes. He's taking it okay, like a champ. Caesars, He's a trooper. Let me tell you this. Your crazy puffs and your Italian cheese bread are delicious. So dry. I ordered two cups of the little Caesar, little Caesar's garlic butter to smear on top of the crazy. <laughs> oh, he's puffs. repeating. Cause he's pissed. As he's <laughs> eating it, he's thinking of how much better it would be with garlic butter smear. All the and time we talk trash about him pouring order. it on the stuff. This is like the one time where I'm like, no, he definitely needs it. I like so, it because it's a good sign of his I standards. Like, you know, he has them at this in this case. Doordash, like, like, we're sorry about that. Do you want to my garlic butter? With the two garlic cups? <laughs> and I'm like, yes, I would, please. <laughs> yes, I would like a refund, a dollar fifty refund. And Doordash please. basically said, "Well, here you go. Here's a refund." 
<laughs> for the uh, dipping sauce you didn't get. There's another slice of that Italian cheese bread from Little Caesars. It's way you too what? dry I like without Little sauce. Caesars, so I'm not going to be too mad about this because DoorDash did give me a refund for did the missing garlic refund? cups. <laughs> like I said, I ordered two cups of garlic butter to go with my order so I could smear the garlic butter all over those crazy puff deals. <laughs> He should, he should just blend this up. pizza into three monsters and call right? it a night, you know? Right? He should whip up his own dipping but sauce. But it is what it is. Uh, Gemcore asks, has he ever done a food review and said it wasn't good? There definitely was it, at least one I can remember. But I think it was spicy ramen noodles and they were too spicy. I'll eat the rest of this later when I get hungry, but I wanted to give you a quick little food review for you cool cobras. Ben, do you remember when Cobra to to... put raw bacon on his, I believe it was pizza? Yeah, did, it, was did a, he still... it was a frozen pizza. Did he still like the pizza even though it had a raw bacon on it? Or was no, he like, I, no, I can't eat this? I think he was like, oh, I got to cook this longer. I think he actually yeah, back yeah. then had the awareness to be like, I can't eat this. Why? Would he eat yeah. something raw while I was gone? No, no, no. <laughs> Someone in the chat says, has he ever not liked something? And I think there was like a spicy ramen noodle he didn't like because it was just too ridiculously hot. Because he added it's a ton rare. of shit to it. It's rare. Yeah, the, the dragon crazy spice pepperoni noodles. Pepperoni puffs from Little Caesars. People are saying he didn't like cat food too. <laughs> he didn't like you, cat food. You wouldn't fucking believe it watching those streams, to be honest. No, we ate it all up like it was nothing. <laughs> Didn't he do it multiple times? Too, yes. Like, in multiple orders? Yes. And he was like, I'm owning the trolls to like bite eating. The <laughs> and it's like, no, dude. <laughs> Sav. The cat food sandwich would have been better with horsey sauce. <laughs> and you know what? Their, their Italian cheesy yeah. bread's pretty good. A little garlic butter, a little like horsey the, sauce. We're good. Little Caesars. They're budget friendly. Crushed up Doritos, too. You know? <laughs> Dude, he was so mad because there was some, like, trans woman that, I guess, had allegations against her. But it was like an ad in Spain. So I don't know why he cared, but he was he did like a 24 hour boycott on Doritos. No. Yeah. Oh, no. He's like, I've been eating Doritos since I was a kid. And the, but but then they uh, cut ties with that person because of the PR, the bad PR. Uh. Yeah. You on struggle streets. You're on Struggle Street and you want pizza or something pizza like. So you hit up little squeezers because you got to squeeze that money and make it count. You know what I'm saying? Know what you're saying. Now, the restaurant in question that I ordered this from was out of the dipping sauce. Didn't include a note. Or something that says, hey, sorry, we didn't, we're not able to completely <laughs> complete your order. We're out of the sauce. <laughs> you know, if your store doesn't have any more of the garlic dipping sauce and you're out and you let me know ahead of time before I open <laughs> it and get disappointed, you know, you know what I'm saying? What would he be talking get... about right now if they didn't forget the dipping sauce? <laughs> it would have ended. That would be it. Good question. Communication. Little Caesars is going down is now, key. though. Okay, if you have customers that are going to your restaurants, communication is key, you two. It's whatever, man, because I want to try the Crazy Puffs Little Caesars pizza deal. You know, they've got these little circles, these little discs of miniature pizza action. And uh, I got to say this, your Crazy Puffs are delicious. They're like little miniature pepperoni pizzas. They taste just like a, a slice of your pepperoni pizza, but like in a smaller, more bite-sized form. And uh, I'm here for it. 
So even though I'm kind of ticked off they didn't give me the garlic butter that I ordered, <laughs> you know, overall, the food that I did order and that I did get, I'm here for it. It's delicious. There you go. I got the dishwasher going off next to me because I'm washing dishes, so don't mind that. So these, uh, what are these? The crazy puffs? <laughs> That's what they are. Puffs. Yeah. These are like... Made out of puff. Oh, no, I'll eat one more for the camera here. Let me just close that up. There we are. These are the uh, Little Caesars Crazy Puffs. They're like mini pot pies, almost. Yeah, I, I'm not ordering these. Uh, if I'm or I would rather just order a pizza. But I, I think I would be able to get tricked into them one time and be like, "Oh, well, let's throw in a, some stupid puffs," and then I'd eat them. Like, yeah, I'd rather have a slice of pizza. They got like cheese on the outside and like cheese and pepperoni in the middle. We have no idea what happened to his finger unless it's still from the cat attack from months ago. Yeah. They're tasty. Tastes like Little Caesars. You can't beat it if you like the taste of Little Caesars. Overall, even though I didn't get the uh, garlic dipping cups, that I, again, I asked for two cups of garlic dipping butter. So I could smear it all over the top of these crazy puffs. They did you a favor. Now, if these, if these dumb little puffs had like a scoop of mac and cheese in them, oh! and then covered in cheese, I might, I might fuck around with that. But they did not include those in the order. Either they did it or the dasher didn't give it to me. One of the two, I don't know. All I know is I ordered some Italian bread and an order of crazy puffs and then two cups of garlic butter for dipping or <laughs> smearing whatever didn't get the garlic butter it is what it is doordash gave me a refund for the two cups of garlic butter so can't complain on that but these crazy puffs from but little caesars you can complain a hundred times while eating everything yeah <laughs> as you've done <laughs> he's gonna give it a, a high score right Okay. Yeah, well, so far he has. He likes them, but he knows the butter would have made this approval. better. Got the Cobes approval. They are delicious. Maybe you're not quite fully hungry for a full Little Caesars pizza. And you just want a little snack, a little snack, something <laughs> to nibble on. Uh, well, yeah, just put the pizza in the fridge then. Get a big pizza and save the rest. <laughs> for 21 and up, not a sponsor. And honestly, I'm not complaining because these crazy puffs with the side of uh, their Italian cheesy bread, it's not bad. It's tasty. It's cheese and bread. It's hard to ruin that. You picture, you picture like a little hockey puck sized Little Caesars pizza. That's basically what these are. They're like the pizza bagel bites, but like in Little Caesars form. With the cheese on the outside, the pepperoni and cheese and sauce and whatever else in the middle. And it just tastes like a like, like a Little Caesars pepperoni pizza, but like in a smaller, more bite-sized version. I did not get, so I appreciate that, DoorDash. Thank you. <laughs> He's still oh. talking about the fucking garlic butter. <laughs> Overall, we fast like I forward. Said, these crazy puffs, they're not bad. They are not bad at all. You know, you use like garlic butter. bagels where they're, they're like round little miniature pizzas that you can just bite into kind of thing. That's the vibe I'm getting from these crazy puffs from Little Caesars. Hey. Make that white stuff come out again. and uh, So I'm I can dip it. my crazy puffs in it. 
And fuck rape and fuck mass shootings. Like I said, it's, it's not bad. You know, it's tasty. And no, they did not do anything with my lizard. Wouldn't this have been a great time for the the trolls to have sent him some garlic butter sauce? Half the time they're just sending him sauce. The one time he needs it. Where are you, trolls? (laughs) Head YouTuber trolls gonna be like, oh my god, uh, like Uh, fuck all that. Okay, you you take your stupid comments about my lizard puff and shove it up your ass. It's just a coincidence that they happen to have the same name. But despite that, yeah. Okay, Little Caesars, I see what you were doing or trying to do with your uh, crazy puffs. Little miniature pizza bites, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, I like Little Caesars. They're delicious. You do a hey. free eat your own with uh, stuffed crust, bacon as the main topping. Then you pick bacon like three more times. And they just... <laughs> They pile the pizza with bacon, and then you get to order like their stuffed crazy bread, which is like their crazy breadsticks stuffed with mozzarella uh. cheese, which they only give you three of those per order, which I think is kind of shitty, but, you know, it's an incentive to order more, I guess. But, you know what, I'm not going to sit here and dog in Little Caesars. They are great tasting products. When your budget is tight, son... And you want some of that pizza action for a little bit less money? Let's be real. Some of the f- some of that pizza action. Some of that hot pizza that action. Hot pizza for, action <laughs> for the for the for the price he paid for the breadsticks and the crazy puffs, he could have got a pizza, a whole pizza. Right. The fucking maybe even an XL. Fast food pizza chains <laughs> are a bit more expensive. And Little Caesars tends to be a little bit more budget-friendly. And it's like, you know what? For being budget-friendly pizza products, they're delicious. It's like, Cobra, what's the verdict on these crazy puffs, Little Caesars, miniature, like, pizza hockey puck, you know, style? Is he going to take away the seal of approval? No. I can't complain. They're they're tasty. You know what I'm saying. I'm a little ticked off that I didn't get the garlic butter I ordered with it, but DoorDash made it right. So it's like I'm over it already. You know. <laughs> you're you're like not the though. Italian you keep bringing it up. Bread. It's delicious. I've had it before, but the crazy puffs. I wanted to try an order of the crazy puffs anyways, but they were like. You can either order it with a pizza or order it by itself. And I'm like, I don't need a whole fucking pizza to review it. Uh, You know what I'm saying? Because my appetite wasn't feeling it. But they were like, you want to order the crazy puffs and a side to go with it? And I'm like, okay, you know what? I'll, I'll order some of their Italian cheesy bread to go with it as a side. You know, because I don't need a whole pizza when I'm not feeling that hungry to begin with. But it is what it is, YouTube. Cheers. Happy Saturday. Cheers. Happy St. Patrick's evening. It's tomorrow St. Patrick's Day. That is a, like, it's the one time Cobra's like, I'm getting drunk, where it's like, that is, yeah, that's, you can. <laughs> Cinco de Mayo no. also. He should be sipping on, like, mezcal margaritas. Also Mother's Day. You should be, yes. if you have if you have a shitty relationship with your mom, you should be able to get wasted on Mother's Day. Well-known drinking holiday. And uh, Mother's I Day. got a couple of angry orchards. And like I still got a whole bottle of the coconut rum left, which I'm not going to lie, that probably will get polished off. <laughs> tonight anyways. But I digress. Josh if you if you had to host a dinner for King Cobra, what what spread like are you said, making, my, Josh? My only complaint about this order is I didn't. I'm just get the ordering from every fast food the- restaurant I can think of, and then like seven bags of like the four dollar Doritos, you know. And I, I suggest you get a giant brick of Velveeta and have it melted into a punch bowl. One hundred percent. 
I'm just going to order a, but like 1,000 Arby's cup, cup sauces and just dump them into a bowl. <laughs> <laughs> I ordered. Outside of that, like, the food's delicious. You know, as soon as I got it, it was still piping hot and fresh. This will make for a tasty dinner or a snack later when I get hungry again, so I'm not complaining. He always saves it you know? for later. I don't mean to, like, repeat myself on multiple occasions, but, you know, someone's got to say it. Like, this is just an honest food review. And if you like the food reviews, subscribe for more. You like Little Caesars? And do you like Angry Most people don't. Orchard? Subscribe for more. This is hard apple cider for 21 and up. I do there like red apple. It's it's a little bit cheaper, but my favorite out of the two would have to be Angry Orchard, not a sponsor. Mm. I was an Angry Orchard two guy. Two apples per can, and this stuff is just crisp, refreshing adult beverage. Yeah. Anyways, YouTube, if you're in the mood to try something different, you know you're not and you're not that hungry. You just want something to snack on. I would recommend the Crazy Puffs from Little Caesars. All right. Now, and, uh, our chat says Cobra reminds them of Trailer Park Boys. I, I would argue there are more characters in Cobra's actual circle of life than in the Trailer Park Boys TV show. Like You, you put them up against Bubbles. Bubbles is like the, the, the craziest one in Trailer Park Boys, I think. He goes toe to toe with Bubbles easily. You throw in Darth Linney versus, you know, any one of the guys. Cool taste, cool taste. His circle of people, it's it might as well be its own reality show. It's true. I hope you're all having a beautiful Saturday, early St. Patrick's Day evening. Tomorrow is St. Patty's Day, so let's all get wasted and like enjoy it. You know. Cheers. Check out this weird thread against our buddy Adam yesterday. See? Okay. I should be legally allowed to execute this white boy. Why? Cuz he interviewed or uh, he reviewed the movie Joy Luck and gave it like a 6 out of 10. How could he? <laughs> right. And he he was even like, check it out if you want to check it out. Like, it's okay. But this person can't handle any bit of negativity. It, what is Joy Luck? Have it's, we seen it? Is this is this the director of Joy Luck? It's a it's a no, no. If if she worked on Joy Luck, which it's disputable now, people are wondering if she's just full of shit. Her account got suspended mm. for this kind of shit. But uh, it's it's a movie about transgenders in Pakistan, I believe. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it got really nasty. I wonder if. Uh, let me see here. Hmm. How far down is it? Where they at? Where they at? Yeah, there's there's a part where they they're sharing the clips and they're really like positive actually, but I don't have them offhand. You guys can find them. Like I said. These crazy puffs, they ain't half bad. You know, it's like a little it's like a little Caesar's little little mini pizza. I'm here for it. There well you go. They didn't come with the fucking garlic butter though. <laughs> they really dropped the ball on that garlic butter, man. With no cheers. <laughs> all right, we're gonna get into antagonism right now. We will see you all there. Here we go. <laughs> Thank 
Walker turned off the goddamn internet. Oh, don't touch me. Don't touch me. TP, are they gonna touch me? Damn it. <sighs> um, what's this all? Oh, no, no. We already watched that earlier. I'm sorry. And you can call me a nationalist or whatever you want here. We do have a culture here. You may not like it. That's cool. Bye, leave. We do have a culture here. We need to do what we can to at least maintain some of it. I understand we're a melting pot. We should pot. go back into the diver uh, other viewership mode for this. Oh, shit. My bad. My bad. City can be a strength, but we do need to maintain the American culture that we've developed here in the United States. We shouldn't let people from other countries come in here and out and to be quite frank, out outpopulate us. Us? Natural born American citizens. That's what's happening over in Europe, and it's a disaster. You've got hordes of people running down the street raping women in broad daylight, and if you go to report them to the police, the police arrest you for being racist. I'm not fucking kidding. That actually happens over there. You're full of shit. So maybe we should at least be a little bit cautious about how many people we let in so we can keep our national identity as a country. Am I, do I sound like Hitler here or am I making a point? Huh? I mean, you're making a Hitler Isn't American point. culture like melting pot kind of a yes. thing? Like there's just a bunch of fucking cultures. Yes. But we did have a, a way of bringing people in before that was strict. And I think people do want to try and figure out a way to be right uh, with bringing people in legally so they can contribute legally to America. Wasn't but, Ellis yeah. Island like just sign in and you're in, though? Mostly. <laughs> well, yeah. I think a lot of it, uh, the, the, the cruise ships took care of bringing people over, though. Like it, you couldn't just sign in. You had to get approved through the cruise ships and they were responsible for you when you got here. If you had like some wrong paperwork or something, they would have to put you up on Ellis Island until they figured your stuff out. So they were very strict about making sure people were going where they needed to go because the cruise ships didn't want to foot the bill for it. Asking me or yes. just asking the void? You. No, I think that's a good point. I don't think you sound like Hitler. No, and, and this is this is another thing. It's going to be harsh. I don't think you sound like Hitler. Hitler when you look German. at these countries where these people are coming from, so Mexico, South and Central America, Haiti, places like that, it's not unreasonable for the average American middle class citizen. It's got a pretty, despite everything going on, has a pretty decent life. It's not unreasonable for him to look at those countries and say, yeah, you know, I really don't want my country to turn into that. That's not an unreasonable take. That's pretty fucking reasonable if you ask me. So yes, bring bring some people in. Diversity is a strength to an extent. So That's yeah, bring in like a hundred people online, like whatever the fuck. Absolutely. Like I don't, I don't even but get. We this. can't have. We can't let there be more non-Americans here than Americans. We can't get totally overrun and have our culture flip turned upside down to a culture that, let's be real, historically just hasn't worked out that well. But hold on, no, 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 no. no. That's hypocritical. Like the America that you love, that's like the, the global superpower, you would have to admit that that worked. You know, uh, yesterday I was in a diner and there was some old 70 year old guy next to me and he was wearing a, a Trump hat that said, Keep America Great. And I realized they dropped that slogan because for that slogan to be effective, you have to admit that right now it's great under Biden, right? <laughs> If you want to keep America great, that means you think it's great now, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Cag. And if you want to call me racist or whatever, fuck you. I don't care. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like All right. it. Hey, thanks for watching. Huh? I'll be right back. I'm, I'm going to put you guys up here. All right. Sweet. So. What's up, I don't I do think we need some sort of uh, border control when it comes to the amount of drugs, fentanyl that comes from China through South America into this country. I think we need to start dealing with the, the flow of fentanyl that comes into this country. There's a lot of stuff we have to crack down and deal with. And 
I don't know. I don't know how it's going to be done yet, but I do think, I do think we got to look in how to do that. I think there's a lot of problems, and I think that letting these problems happen um, is going to make weirdos like this have their big grand stand, and more people are going to want to listen to them because they see this destruction coming into our country, and they're. You, there's a ton of areas in the United States where you just can't hide it. Your kids are walking to, to, to grade school and they're walking by people who are dosed up in the streets dying. It's, it's, it's sad. I feel like it's odd though. Cause when you talk to guys like this, you know, their solutions usually include like wasting money on something like a fucking giant border fence or something like that. And it's like, we could easily just make the vetting process a little more strict or maybe like actually like fucking defend the borders in a way that like works and operates well. But, um, I don't know. We need a war on drugs. That's not a a war against the users. Like it was in the eighties. It needs to be a war against the supply chain. Yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. The last war on drugs was actually a terrorist attack against the people of america yeah too many people sit in jail for bullshit you know it ain't right it ain't right it ain't right but uh in other news i ordered arby's because i watched cope's video so oh my guy his advertisement get? works i actually don't <laughs> remember i'm kind of like crossfaded <laughs> so <laughs> i'm like just eating it and it's it's all pretty tasty it gets the josh seal of approval the other josh you have it on. You have it here with you. Are you you're eating it? Yeah. Show a little picture of what you got. This is the burger. I haven't taken a bite out of yet. Okay, open up the wrapper. Would you just show me the wrapper? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Show me some of the meat. I want to see the meat. That's a beef and cheddar. Yeah. <laughs> got a big old fat beef and cheddar. Oh, glad you know that by eye. Hell yeah. And I got like loaded curly fries and mozzarella sticks. Um, loaded you know, curly fries? Do they have something on them? Yeah, yeah, it's like, I'll show you. Maybe you can just say it by eye. It's all soggy. It fucking melted in the bag, I guess. Uh, holy crap, that looks good. Yeah. That's, a, that's a messy Bessie. Yeah, fucking it, the whole bag broke. Everything's broken right now. Oh, I hate that. Yeah. Did you get a cheddar cup on the side? No, I, I ordered one, but they didn't send it, those motherfuckers. I'm about to call for a refund. <laughs> Where's the garlic butter, Josh? <laughs> oh. I'm actually, like, I get really sad that those, like, uh, like weird red pill channels are successful. Uh, I'm not sad they're successful. I understand why they're successful. We, what was that? I was going to say, can you enlighten me? We're about to we, we live in a world where people aren't getting what they want. And part of it is because in our consumerist culture, we have put a price tag on desire. This entire country is built on pricing out desire. And when you desire something that can't be bought, you're lost. These guys can't buy girlfriends anymore because women make as much, if not more, than they do. Women are powerful in the workplace right now. You've taken out the power these losers used to have where they could be like, well, if you want to have a delicious dinner, I'll pay for it. Then you can be some butt. But they've, they've, they've stopped that from happening. Girls are like, I can get my own food or I can find some guy who's just going to want to sit with me at a table who will simp me out a freaking TGI Friday's meal. And I don't have to sleep with him. I can just leave. I'm using Tinder for dinner. I don't know. It's funny. I've been on like the dating apps and shit, and I've never had like an issue getting, but just from buying a dinner, you know, no, it's it's like most people don't have an issue, but these guys, they don't have answers and they feel like they're owed something. And it's because our economy, our, our consumer nation has always given people the answer. You can buy and pay for it. You can always buy things and you just can't buy it anymore. 
The, the, these guys have no value. Even if they have day jobs, women don't care about your day jobs. You know what I learned recently? Uh, Brazil nuts have higher levels of uh, radioactivity. What? Yeah. Look it up. Like the, <laughs> the, the Brazil nut plant absorbs more radium from the earth than most plants. So Brazil nuts are higher in, in radioactivity than most foods out there. It's, it's, is it dangerous or is it just like... If you eat more than like like 20 a day, it, it is dangerous, yes. Is there another name for Brazil what? nuts that I should know? Uh, do you want me to say it? <laughs> <laughs> Brazil nuts contain some natural radionuclides at higher levels than other foods. Yep. When people eat Brazil nuts, they also ingest the radium contained in them, among other things. This radium is then stored in bones and teeth. Yep. Doesn't radium give you like a lot of energy, though? Like the doctors <laughs> assume it. Nuclear doctors, energy. Doctors advise eating no more than five Brazil nuts a day. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if I've ever eaten one Brazil nut, to be honest. Really? They're tasty. They're, They're good. Really but good. what the hell? Five? What did your grandma call them, though? Um, My grandma probably called them Brazil nuts. That's not what my grandma What about, you, what about your great-grandma? <laughs> yeah. My great <laughs> My grandma was poor. She, she she could only afford peanuts. Something about toes, though. <laughs> yeah, something yeah. about toes. Louis C.K. <laughs> did a thing where he took his like when, when his daughters were really young. He took them I like love over that to one so much. Yeah, and she's like, "Do you want a toe?" <laughs> yeah. So she and then she dies at the end. Yep, yep. Spoiler alert. Yep. Spoiler alert. I'd say no. I do not want that. I do. I I do not want not a blank blank toe. I do not want not with a garden hoe. Right. I don't want it. <laughs> I do not want them here or there. I do not want them on my toe anywhere. I don't want them. I want. Uh, them. Here's uh. Here's Marshall Mathers the fourth. Hey everyone, it's Darth Nihilus here back to you today with another video. And in today's topic, I wanted to talk about the fact that the fact that, that Ukrainian women It's like he's a guest so with us now. So <laughs> damn hot and intimidating both I want to talk about how Ukrainian women are so damn hot and you in intimidating at the same time. And I wanted to start like off definition this video by saying that of like you look like the words you say. It's so yes. weird. Like, if I saw him in public, I'd be like, yeah, that guy definitely says horrible shit about women regularly. And he's an incel. No, I personally cannot stand just how insanely beautiful Ukrainian women are. Okay. Or other Eastern European women, for that matter. And, you know, because of how just sexy, hot, gorgeous, adorable, cute, and all that that Ukrainian women are... They're intimidating. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. What a loser. And the thing about me is that I don't mind or care about being or feeling intimidated by any beautiful women since I myself, believe it or not. By the way, we're $90 away from our goal tonight. Please help us out. Please help us reach the goal. Thank you so much. Start a tip train right now. Link is uh, pinned right there in the chat. Have a Big tip trains in our goal matters. Tip train! Or kink, in other words, to that. But what I do have a problem or issue with or insecurity with myself is the fact that I feel inferior. You are. To any and all attractive, beautiful women. Nope. You're inferior to unattractive women, too. Women, regardless of their race or where they live or where they're from in this world. But Hi guys. I also wanted to say that, of course, not all Ukrainian women are beautiful, just like 
you know, all <laughs> other races of women or cultures of women from all over the world. There are beautiful women, but there are also ugly women, average mid-looking women. And when it comes to me specifically, I am mostly and mainly attracted to women who are really beautiful, even though I have no confidence, self-esteem. I'm not an extrovert, at least not when it comes. You are an extrovert, though, because you put these videos on the Internet. There's like a level of extrovert to you. To you might also a- call him an extrovert if extrovert was short for extreme pervert. <sighs> to successfully talk to any attractive women of any race, from any culture, from anywhere in the world. I just... I don't have any game. I'm not charming. I'm not confident. I do not have self-esteem and I am not an extrovert when it comes to sounds kind of like when Boogie was bitch. Ah, your mic was breaking up there. It's like if when Boogie was pitching himself as employable to the job interview lady, he's just like tearing himself down the whole time. It's true. Specifically, Strong boogie interview beautiful energy women, here. which are by far, again, the most in main women that I have always desired. Oh, in my life. The fine, upstanding young gentleman in Paris, nuts. Mm. Huh. Like, mm. I have just longed and yearned for and craved and wished to have and desired to be with a beautiful woman. And. You know, recently and currently, my favorite women are Ukrainian women. Now, sometimes, occasionally, it changes depending on, you know, something about myself. But, you know, if if I were lucky enough and if I were confident, if I were extroverted, if I did have self-esteem game and if I were charming... And if I did have a good personality, and if I myself was also (laughs) good looking and was funny, also, I would definitely, without a doubt, make a move on a Ukrainian woman if I knew. (laughs) Because then you might be worth having a relationship with. Of course. You have nothing you have nothing to offer any woman. Obviously. Because it would be extremely embarrassing and humiliating. If I were to try to make a move or... By the way, the new crow looks trash. Trash, trash, trash. Who's the star of it? Is it the... uh, A British guy? Skarsgård? Yes. I like the way it looks, to be honest. Bill Skarsgård? And they filmed it not in Detroit? They should... Like, what? Does Bill Skarsgård do bad roles, though? I feel like he's pretty good at picking roles. I'm not uh, trying to demean his talent. I'm just saying, like, he doesn't seem to fit the role for me. Um, hmm. or ask out, move on, or ask out a beautiful. What would make him better for you? Uh, they need to make. Th- so we live. Like, I went back and watched some of the old X Men and Wolverine films, and I'm like. The weakest points of these films is that they don't follow the source material enough. And that was the big thing that the MCU did that attracted the the love and adoration of the fans was that it was very loyal to the source material. So I, I think a Crow movie that's actually even more loyal to the source material than the Brandon Lee version would be a a very welcome thing and could still be a a valid tribute to the film that was legendary that the actor gave his life for. And I was also thinking about this, like that movie Rust where Alec Baldwin killed somebody, that movie will never come out because someone died in an accident in it. They never even thought about that with The Crow. They're like, Brandon Lee, the son of legendary Bruce Lee, died filming this movie. But we're putting it out. <laughs> they, I, <laughs> like, Deadpool 2 had a death on set too, right? I, I didn't know about that. I, th- I think a, a motorcycle accident it could be wrong. Not the lead, though. Like Not like Ryan Reynolds dying. Play. Like, Could you imagine if Ryan Reynolds died oh, yeah. filming a Deadpool movie and then they put it out? Even the scene where he died. 
the 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 not literally his death, but the same scene where he was killed towards the end of the movie. They left that in. I think if it was a Deadpool movie, it would definitely fucking come out. Those things go. Well, what, they I don't sell, know about that. They go not for like a hundred million. I don't or something know. Like that, I like think they're filming. I disagree. I think they're so sensitive now. We're like. That would just kill the movie. Like, you wouldn't see that movie. But I don't know. I could be wrong. When, like, the lead actor dies in a tragic accident, I don't think... I, I don't know. Has that happened uh, recently often, for yeah. a... No. Was that, was, that, was, was that the last time something like that's happened? Yeah, because, like, Rust was, like, people on the crew died. Like, uh, the only time in my life I can think of... Where, like, the lead actor was killed in the movie on set was The Crow. And then having to unfortunately find out that she's already in a relationship, has a boyfriend or husband for that matter, that would just kill my whole vibe. It would just humiliate me and make me feel ashamed and also embarrassed. His vibe is long dead. You know, the thing about Ukrainian women is... I feel like most of them, if not all of them, probably, if anything, have boyfriends and are most likely all taken up. And if it's not all of them, then I feel that it's at least the vast majority of Ukrainian women, whether it, they're from Ukraine or from another country or. Mo- uh, if they're from another country, they're not Ukrainian. <laughs> I love to- Ukrainian women from Ukraine. I love Ukrainian women from another country. It's like, what? I love all Ukrainian women. America, you think he's putting this out in hopes that a Ukrainian woman will hit him up? Probably. It's not happening. It might. They're most likely in a relationship, whether that be a boy and girlfriend relationship. I've, I've Every now and then when we cover this guy, I've seen comments where like, like he, they're like, he's actually handsome, but it's always gay guys. So if Marshall <laughs> just became gay, he'd he'd be up up to his eyes in people in his dating pool. In bussy. Yep. Yeah, so he then, could get a nice gay daddy to take care of him. In wife relationship, but outside of the one that obviously, does. like when it comes to me, because of how bad American women have become. No, three thanks people to- died on the set of Twilight Zone. The movie when John Landis. Yeah, that was fucking awful. Tail rotor a, a young girl got defex explosives. Yep, bringing down the copter, decapitating two and crushing the other. Yep, yeah, a little girl yeah. was decapitated. Not the lead actor. Sad. Um. Holy shit. One in five Ukrainian women are Polish, says Buffalo Spirit. Maybe you a take little bit. that back. All right, let's Frodo get in. Was never seen with a chick. Let's check out True. DP Action News. He called me sir. It got me so few minutes. People are discriminating against wolves. Wow, they're laughing at us at our stupidity. All right. I, I have a news story about the U.S. government getting closer and closer to banning TikTok. I watched an Egghead video recently where Egghead uh, uh, compared the ban of TikTok to people losing their freedom of speech. Uh, Egghead, I don't remember the part of the First Amendment where they guarantee TikTok uh, to your freedom of speech. That's not how it works. It's a private company. It's owned by the uh, basically the Chinese government. So. Shutting down TikTok uh, is they they're probably they'll probably sell it right. I think originally when this was being talked about, Walmart was looking to buy TikTok. Wow, how poetic! Away. How fucking poetic! Yeah. And the House has voted to pass a bipartisan bill that could lead to a nationwide ban of TikTok. On this vote, the yeas are 352, the nays are 352 Kanye's? One <laughs> present, two-thirds being in the affirmative. The rules are suspended. The bill is passed. And without the objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. 
You know, the yays, the yays versus nays is a good way to describe yays, the alt-right, and the nays, the horse-banging <laughs> liberals. This makes a lot of sense. Nay. Been raising concerns about TikTok's Chinese parent company, ByteDance, warning that the app could give the Chinese government access to the data of millions of Americans, including browsing history and location. ABC News senior White House correspondent But then Selena do you Wang just ban me. all Chinese apps? Like, like, where, where do you go with this? Do you ban Timu? ABC's yes. Timu is trash, dude. Jay O'Brien on Capitol Hill, ABC's Elizabeth Schulze, and ABC News contributor, Google Tech Policy fellow Mike Muse. Jay, this bill now heads to the Senate, where its fate is uncertain. What are you hearing from lawmakers about that? Well, look, this was a very significant bipartisan vote on the House for 352 yay votes. That puts a lot of pressure on the Senate and Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer to take some kind of action on this bill because of how big that margin was. And we just saw moments ago after this bill passed, two pretty significant members of the Senate, the chair and vice chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee, Mark Warner and Marco Rubio, formally endorsed this legislation. So that carries a lot of weight when you talk about trying to force Chuck Schumer or at least push Chuck Schumer to put this bill on the floor for a vote. Again, what's in this legislation, just to be clear, is it would seek to force a sale of TikTok from its Chinese parent company, ByteDance, within six months if the legislation becomes law. And only if huh. that sale does not occur could TikTok then be banned on app stores and on web hosting services and things of that nature. So TikTok is calling this legislation a ban. Champions of this legislation, again, Republican and Democrats alike are saying that this is a forced sale and only if ByteDance doesn't act, if this becomes law, could the app be banned. So Elizabeth, what's the likelihood here that ByteDance does sell? Well, and this is going to be the question is, A, does it pass the Senate? Does this legislation... You know, the other day, uh, I was offered an early uh, sale because uh, Reddit's about to go public and they're yeah. they're offering like to people who have been mods there for years they're offering like an early uh, stock sale did you On get that 21st, too first yeah yep yeah, yeah. You can get through it's gonna be 31 to 34 dollars a share yeah yeah, so yeah. If anybody wants to get on uh reddit DM me, send me your money. Ha! <laughs> and then B, can this get through the legal hurdles to get for China to allow the sale to happen? That's an outstanding question. And then what would that actually look like, Diane? We haven't really seen this kind of a sale that's been forced from the U.S. In the past, there have been instances where the government has said a, a Chinese company needs to cut ties, but that's been a complete sale of the company. What we're talking about here is really just the U.S. business splitting off from the Chinese owner, ByteDance. And that raises a whole host of questions. What the, let, what the law itself would look like if it does go into effect is that the, the app would no longer be available on the App Store or on Google Play. Eventually, that would make it impossible for users to use. You couldn't keep updating the app like you would need to, and it wouldn't be available on websites. But this is undoubtedly going to raise some questions about free speech. We have seen the, the small amount of lawmakers who voted against it today. Say it should raise some questions about how important your digital data is. Yeah. Your digital dignity is huge to the point where the United States wants to ban China from having access to it. But all these other companies here in the United States have access to it and they don't mind because these companies have an open door policy with the federal uh, FBI, CIA, NSA. The government's able to peek into all of these things, and they don't mind it here. They want to see you here do it. TikTok gets sold one of the first things it's going to do is up the amount of ads you see in it. You're going to you're going to get a whole different TikTok out of this if it sells. Because right now, it's 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 not chock full of ads because China is getting exactly what they want out of it. Your your digital dignity. Not all of them have an open door policy that like Apple refused to give their encryption information to the federal government. There's. There are certain companies that won't uh, capitulate to that, but in China, there's no choice. Like, your business is a, basically owned by the, the Chinese government, so they they don't even have to get, a, uh, like, a subpoena for it. They can just take it. They don't have to pass a law. Like, everything you have is theirs. This is the First Amendment 
questions that have been raised. We've seen that already raised in courts. So questions about what happens in Congress and then ha what happens from there in the legal process, too. And, and Selena, President Biden's campaign joined TikTok last month. But then on Friday, he said he would sign a bill to ban TikTok if it did pass. How is the White House addressing what appears to be some mixed messaging there? Yeah, Diane, I mean, the White House really struggles to answer that question. Just yesterday, I said, if the president's so concerned about the national security risks, why is his campaign posting on it? But look, the White House also trying to frame this, as you heard what Jay and Elizabeth say, saying it's not an outright ban. It would force a sale. But the reality is, is it would face a lot of legal challenges if it got through the Senate, was signed by the president, and China would likely block it because it would need the Chinese government's approval. And Diane, we've been in this exact place before <laughs> throughout the years where they've tried to force a sale on TikTok, and it just didn't did try. Work. But after that 2020 attempt from Donald Trump to get it banned, China actually changed its regulation so that it actually bars the export of certain technologies, including technologies like the algorithm that underpins TikTok. So the question of where it goes from here could yeah, be in China. If it, they don't have regular Google or YouTube, that's because people tried to use it to go against the government there. That's a yeah. huge difference between here and there. Like anybody could make an anti US government website or platform or whatever. There, if you do it, they'll shut the whole fucking thing down. Like it won't even exist anymore. And you'll be thrown in jail. It's a, it, it's, it is a crazy thing. Long road ahead. You'll be, and I you'll be brainwashed into working for the government. Diane, to set this into context, this is really just the latest shoe to drop in the broader U.S.-China technology cold war, the effort to try and split off <laughs> What if World War Three starts over TikTok? <laughs> I hope not. Technologies from that each other. Sick. It's not worth it. Banned giant Huawei telecommunications firm from the United States, but to move into the arena of apps and software behind expert controls on chips and telecommunications, that would have a sweeping effect because there are many Chinese companies that are influential in the software space in the United States. So Mike, what are you watching for as this bill now heads to the Senate? So many things, but Diane, this is a dream team panel. I'm so excited for this conversation. In particular, I want to give attribution to Selena's excellent reporting. She mentioned in a other break something that really underscores the frustration that I have with this bill and with this Congress. Uh, she mentioned uh, the Chinese app uh, Timu and Sheen. Timu was- No one's talking about we uh, WeChat. That's another one. I have friends. What the hell? I have friends that live in China, and we WeChat is like their main chat app. We we don't really use WeChat here in the United no. States, though, right? I use it to yeah. talk to them, like my friends that live in China. So they use it for banking too over there. It's pretty funny. Yep. One of the largest uh, advertisers for commercials during the Super Bowl that averaged oh. over 120 million views. Timu had an ad in almost every single quarter of it, to which it became a trending topic on social media of how much money Timu has to keep marketing to us. Timu is a marketplace based app where lots of U.S. customers go on and buy products. And when they're buying the products, they're putting our credit card information down, their home address, telephone numbers, our whereabouts. And it's also to the algorithm. You're telling, reading. you're telling China how stupid you are to buy garbage in abundance? Our consumer pattern behaviors. And there's so there's already so much uh, apps in the China that Chinese uh, owned that can get so much it's access to our data, which underscores the performative nature of Congress that makes Americans so frustrated uh, that Congress isn't doing the difficult task of understanding the nuance of how these social media platforms really work. And that's a challenge because the technology is moving so fast that that is a complete an opposition to how Congress works at a very slow pace. So Congress is going to have to change its operational process in order to keep up with the pace of innovation and technology to really create legislation that address the issues. But that is the hard work and not performative nature. All right. Selena Wang, Jay O'Brien, Elizabeth Chelsea, Mike Muse. Thank you. First at five. They, oh, dude, this is crazy. Watch this. I have a shocker on the subway. A group of people attacked by a stranger with fire. He's got Molotov cocktails. Good evening, and thank you for joining us. I'm Gilma Avalos. <laughs> I'm Adam Cooper. Is that the New York subway, too? Yes. Looking for that man you just Fuck saw yeah, holding dude. two cans of fire. Imagine you had, like, a basketball in your hand, and he was coming up to you, and you just pushed the basketball into his cans and lit him on fire. 
That'd be, that'd be so fucking sweet. Subway platform, they say he lit the flammable liquid and then threw the cans at a group of strangers. The attack happened at the 28th Street stop in Chelsea along the one line. And police say that group was just standing on the platform when two flaming cans came flying their way. Now, thankfully, no one was hurt. But that guy who did it, he is still on the loose. And News 4's Checky Beckford is live in Chelsea. And, you know, here we're looking at Checky another. Is that Harrison Ford in the, the background? <laughs> Another random attack indeed, Adam. And, you know, we've seen some crazy Look at the guy. things in the subway, <laughs> but this one is right up there. Can you imagine standing down here? And <laughs> the girl was, like, doing this. Seeing some guy with yep. uh, fire in his hands and then him throwing it at you. Uh, luckily, the camera is right here behind me, captured it happened. Let's take a look at that video again, showing that man uh, basically walking up to the turnstiles with the two canisters of fire in his hand. Um, and That must have got hot, right? really fast too. police say after that video stops he actually threw it at a group of people who were standing on the other side police say that was unprovoked that those people had not done anything to the man but for some reason he targeted them uh that fortunately though no one was hurt oh, or injured well let's as not get hasty this, this guy uh, this again, guy could have a good away. reason take a listen to what we uh, don't writers here we don't know his, his motives it's crazy I don't even know what to say. You can't just do this to kill people like that. No, 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 no. It gets one random, that's it. Never mind, I trust this guy. And you could see what the man was wearing there pretty clearly, uh, but police, in addition, gave this description of him wearing a gray hooded sweatshirt um, underneath a black jacket, black pants, and black sandals. This happened on sandals. February 5th. Sandals. It's unclear oh uh, why we're just hearing about it This now. woman's we're name is Checky Beckford. What yeah. a name. Hot. Live in Chelsea, Checky Beckford. News 4, New York. Thank you, Checky. Checky. I don't know. I live for the fucking crazy people in New York. Yeah, b until they turn you into a freaking s'more. Yeah, I would love to see a crazy battle between Seattle crazy people and, and New York crazy people because that would be something. Because the thing is, is like, a, and this is, it's sad, but a lot of the homeless people in New York die off in the winter. Here they live all year. They survive. Yeah. Like the winter I'm here is just rain all winter. Um, I, I, last time I was in New York City subway, I, I got to give it to the New York City homeless there, though. They are the ones that did survive They're They're gritty. They're they're nasty. The Seattle's bad, but I feel like they would get wrecked by the New York City. Homeless. And both of them would get steamrolled by the Portland homeless. The Portland homeless are like the alpha homeless. Those fuckers are insane. San Francisco is on par with Portland. Yeah. They're pretty they're pretty bad. <laughs> we nothing, should, nothing beats the schizophrenia in New York though. Nothing. Uh, you never been to Portland. We should, we should do a <laughs> super bum fight and just like Mortal Kombat take people from each area and put them in a uh I don't know, an Arby's or something in the Midwest. Now to break I would news. love to see them in like an official UFC ring or something though. <laughs> Less than a day after a measles case was reported in Chicago, we're now learning of a second case. This time at a migrant shelter in Pilsen. CBS 2's Mugo Odigwe is live in our control room this morning with what we are learning from health officials. Good morning, Mugo. Yes, good morning to you both. So the Chicago Department Mugo of Public Health says this second case for the case cool names was identified of the night. In a young she has, she's more attractive and has nicer hair. I just want to say that it's totally a wig, though, right? Uh, is it? Well, I mean, it totally a is. Child at the shelter. I don't know if it's a wig. I think it's like extensions. Alter, but that child Hugo is Odigwe. no longer versus infectious. Checky now, Beckford. As for the shelter in question, we know it's on South Halstead in Pilsen. Public health officials say they are conducting an investigation to figure out who else that child may have come in contact with while infectious. That means everyone who lives at the shelter will have to stay put until health officials figure out if they've been vaccinated Good. against measles. Those who have can leave the shelter. Others can't. The real can't. question is which Wendy's parking lot does it happen in? There's a good there's a good question. I say the the OG Wendy's in Columbus. Oh my god. Yeah, the original Wendy's in Columbus isn't a Wendy's anymore, but it is like I 
I mean, like the the building is still there, but it's not a Wendy's anymore. But then there's like the HQ in Dublin. So yeah, that's the one we do. The HQ Wendy's. Yeah, yeah, that yep. that's ridiculous. Yeah, that's in Dublin. That's a rid- the most perfect Wendy's ever. Like Dublin, you'll- Ohio. Yeah, 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 Dublin, yeah. Ohio. Okay. That's where uh, Wendy's is headquartered. Uh, and I used to live down the street from it. I never had an order wrong. I got through the the drive through so fucking fast. It was unbelievable from like even during rush hour from like order to like get your food was so fast. They didn't forget the salt packet. They didn't forget the ketchup. They didn't forget anything. It was unbelievably quick until they've been screened for symptoms and offered the measles vaccine. Meantime, just yesterday, we told you about the first measles case reported I in really Chicago. I really hope there's not going to be a measles outbreak. There won't because uh, we require... Most people are vaccinated. Yeah, most people are vaccinated. To like go to like public school, you have to have a measles vaccine. And that, it's really only going to break out in pockets where vaccination rates are low. By the yeah. way, they're the by the way they're too. very low because of like when 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 getting vaccinated became like a political position, we have less people vaccinated than ever before. So yeah, we're having measles outbreaks because there's pockets of unvaccinated people. There's more of them now. It used to just be like so the the bad. it used to just be like the random hippie colony or whatever. Now it's you know every fucking dumb redneck. It's true. For the first time in five years, public health officials are now. I argued with a dumbass in a server the other day about it. People about a possible exposure. Anyone who may have visited Swedish and now Hospital their kids got in Lincoln Square measles. or rode the CTA bus number 92 on February 27th could be at risk. But the Chicago area is not alone when it comes to measles cases. Just last month, the Indiana Department Zap of Public Rose Health Dower confirmed sent the case- in a $5 dono uh, 17 minutes ago. And it didn't get read. Zap said Vic Morrow and those two children were horribly killed on the set due to negligence and blatantly breaking safety laws for filming. He's talking about the uh, Twilight, yeah, uh, Twilight Zone John movie. Landis movie. Anytime young talent dies, it's awful. Anton Yelchin and Twy Trang, too, albeit they, were, they weren't shooting on film when they passed. Uh, my mom also sent in a text or a, a, a DM to me or a message to me bringing up that Vic Morrow was one of the people that died on the on that set. So, yeah, uh, rest in peace. Everybody who's ever died, ever. <laughs> now we can move on. Thank you, Zap, for that. Here's, uh, here's the thing. Like, I, I'm in this other Discord server, and this guy posted this thing about someone in New Mexico dying of bubonic plague. And I pointed out, because I live there, you know, for almost a decade, uh, that happens. It's it's because uh, prairie dogs carry these fleas that spread bubonic plague, and it's a thing that just happens in New Mexico and and in the Southwest, where like fleas flourish in that kind of climate, and and that's what it is. It's not like a new thing. It's a perfectly normal thing that's been going on for a very long time. Uh, in Europe, when the plague killed a bunch of people, it was rats uh, spreading the plague with their fleas. It was fleas. So I I told this guy that, and he was like, oh, okay, thanks. I didn't know that. So this guy, me and this guy move on, right? So so then, um, then all of a sudden this guy pipes up. He says... He says, also, if you release three million illegals into the country, it can also happen then. But that could be said to be a discussion for another time and place. And I said, okay, (laughs) I'm pretty sure it's just fleas that cause it. And he said, measles is coming back too. So he like forgot about the plague thing. He's like, measles is coming back too. And I said, yeah, in which in, in areas with low measles vaccination rates. And he said... You know, um, natural immunity is the thing, right? So To the measles? <laughs> well, by this guy's logic, then, all of the illegals bringing measles are just helping us by helping us build natural immunity, right? There you go. This guy should be pro-legals. Yep, yep. 
but he's not. He, of course, his positions are contradictory. That's what happens when you have no logic. I said the reason measles went away is in the fir- uh, they went away in the first place was the creation of the vaccine. And then this, he goes, yeah, but vaccine these days are crap. Okay, we haven't seen these measles. Are crap vaccines. We haven't seen measles even where people know that. Uh, no, there's still been measles here and there, and it's usually in populations with low vaccination rates. And now there's thousands upon thousands of military aged men from all sorts of countries that hate America crossing our southern border every day with nobody stopping them. Do the math, which the math. Some awfully Sturgis esque <laughs> content going on here. Yes. And by the way, um,. <laughs> Plenty of people, millions of people cross both of our borders every day legally and they don't get tested for measles. So to suggest that it's illegals, like what what makes an illegal person more likely to have the measles than a non-illegal? Like uh, it's it's ridiculous. I want to know the legality of the person in that homeless shelter with measles. I need to know right now. So then I said. You have no idea what you're talking about. You're either a troll or just really not intelligent. Either way, it makes arguing with you a waste of time. And he said, no, I just don't believe everything the mainstream government owned media tries to tell me. Counterintuitive as it may sound, somebody who hasn't thought about it, maybe it's worth looking at news sources that the narrative pushers don't want you to see. Is this Tim Pool's sock account? Yeah. What have you got to lose? Just hearing that. <laughs> is it, so like, is this guy a troll? Like, I used to think automatically this type of person was a troll. But now I'm like, there's a lot of dumb people that would say this. Look, Ben, it's time you start reading blaze.tv for your news. Okay. Cool story, bro. Please do me a favor and get the measles to build your natural immunity. I'm sure you'll be fine. By using your logic, the people you're claiming bring it here are doing us a favor. Not really think about it more. Did you think about it more? I also did the math. Oh, shit. You thought about it more and you did the math? I did the math. Well, there you go. And that guy's fucking stupid. There you go. (laughs) He's waiting for the other shoe to drop. Donald Trump. Many of the other charges have been left intact. So CBS News legal contributor and Loyola Law School professor Jessica Levinson is going to join us now to explain. All right. So uh, which what are we talking about here? What's been withdrawn and what does it mean? Uh, It means that the prosecutor can still go back, can still go to the grand jury and say we need more specificity. So the bottom line for people watching is it doesn't mean that these particular claims go away. It means that there could be a delay. Is this woman's eye makeup like poorly put on? Has she been crying recently or something? It might be. The judge gave the the prosecution six months to go back and plead with the required specificity for these particular claims, but it doesn't take six months. And so the prosecution, and again, the big question is, who will the prosecutor be? But the prosecution can act more quickly. So this was basically a motion to dismiss, a motion by the defendants to say, We didn't get enough notice of what we're actually being charged with. There were deficiencies in the complaint. So go ahead and throw that complaint out. What the judge said today is basically, I disagree with you. I agree. I disagree. For those portions of the complaint where I agree, the prosecution can still go back and try again. So what happens next, Jessica? I think what happens next is that the prosecution will go back and we're talking about specific parts of the indictment that deal with which provisions of the Georgia Constitution are alleged to have been violated. And what the judge says here is there's a lot of provisions of the federal constitution and the Georgia Constitution. Go ahead and give the defendants notice of exactly what we're talking about here. And I think that that's what the prosecution will do. They'll go back to a grand jury and they'll say, we mean these particular provisions the Constitution. They can then issue a superseding indictment. That just means like this is the new amended complaint and they can then continue to move forward. So I can't keep track now of any of the dates of any of these things, but I presume something like this pushes whatever dates are on the calendar, pushes them back. Well, 
I don't know, actually, in the mm. sense that the next criminal trial, I think we all understand, will be that March 25th trial in New York. Mm -hmm. And that's the case that's coming up that deals with the hush money payments and the business ledgers and whether or not the former president committed a felony by mischaracterizing payments to Michael Cohen in furtherance of trying to win the election. So given that I think the Georgia prosecutors can actually act with a reasonable amount of speed here, and given that that New York case I think is expected to take over a month, I'm actually not sure that we're really talking about a delay here. I know for all of these various parts, it's just trying to keep the jigsaw puzzle in place and figure out what does this actually push back. I think the answer is maybe nothing. The mm. bigger delay would be if the district attorney is found to have a conflict of interest and if she's disqualified. Mm. All right, Jessica Levinson, always great to have you breaking this down for us. We appreciate it. Thank you. Do we know what the, they're allowed to retrial him for and what was dropped? Does this seem like a Trump win here? Or uh, Some of them being dropped. Like, he's trying really hard to not have to go to court before the election. Part of that yeah. is because it can hurt his chances in the election, but also he doesn't have the power to pardon himself before he's president. So he wants to face these charges after he's in office. Hmm. Yeah. Which is crazy. I never thought we'd live in a world that was like that, but that's where we are. How are you feeling on the climate of Trump getting reelected? Are you, are you, I think it's really a, a really good cho uh, chance. I, I probably actually, if I had to bet on it, I would bet it would happen. Ugh. Yep. Josh, if you had to sit down and eat dinner with Trump, what are you what are you ordering for dinner? If you have to Well done steak with ketchup. Nah, fucking Arby's, dude. <laughs> Extra horsey sauce. I hope Trump's they bring it. Some Arby's and <laughs> some horsey. It's the horsies. best sauce. It's the most horsey like sauce. It's there's nobody but be there's none better sauce, and believe me, I know sauce. Um we, uh, here's Kendall talking about us. Let's see what he has to say. Oh. For those times of the day when J Eric July is busy, that's where you come here to further learn how to, you know, be great and touch grass and all that. Unfortunately, the type of people who professionally hate, hate Eric July, like the drunken peasants, their idea of touching grass is being permanently glued to their bong, hence why they're brain dead. I really like listening to this guy at work, to be honest. <laughs> like, it's like word salad, and it turns my brain off. It's really great. It's almost like ASMR for, like, autism or something. He's got Thompson's son. <laughs> Kids in the hall. Yeah. No thanks, Scott. The, Not a fan. Look at the small butt on this girl and the giant upper butt. Yep. Towards the upper body, tiny torso, tiny butt, tiny legs, and this masses of the universe shoulder and, and chest area. When, when Scott Thompson went to a gay bathhouse, he saw the human urinal, a guy covered in vinyl with a with a tube stuck to his mouth. And while he was walking to the human urinal, he was thinking, like, should I lower myself to this level of perversion? I'm I'm famous. I like I can have anybody I want normally. Like, why would I do such a deplorable, degenerate thing? And then he walks up to the human urinal and starts to whip his dick out. And the human urinal goes, no, thanks, Scott. Not a fan. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's heavy, dude. Wow. That's from Scott's stand up. It's so fucking good. Like I never saw that coming. He's so good at it. He's he's one of my favorites. And he's also Kendall's dad. <laughs> Did we reset this or Yeah, yeah, just to show you Kendall. Um let me get some other shit here. Was that all he said? He just brought up our names? Yeah. Let's see if he's streaming right now, though. Let's see. Let's see who is streaming. Morton Dave wonders how Kendall draws so much and never gets any better. That's easy. I don't think I don't think Kendall thinks he's uh, needs to get better. Yeah, he thinks he's pretty good. 
Yeah, I, I'm grabbing a couple of videos really quick here. Josh, what do you think? You got to take Kindle to dinner. What, what, what are you bringing to a dinner for Kindle? Ooh, that one's rough. I'm going to go Little Caesars, but I'm going to like tell, I'm going to write, I'm going to order garlic cup sauces and I'm going to write in the note, <laughs> don't bring the garlic cup sauces. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the movie Dinner for Schmucks? Yes. No. So, Josh, in the movie Dinner for Schmucks, there's uh Ben uh, tell tell me if I, I'd say any of this wrong. It's it's a dinner where you bring a weirdo, like a, a fucking law cow yeah, basic like type the, of person. Yeah, the winner brings the more pathetic weirdo. Yeah, it's like you you everybody brings a guest and whoever has the most pathetic guest wins. If we're having a dinner for schmucks, which drunken peasants law cow are you bringing to the dinner for schmucks? I don't know the the guy's name. I always forget it. He was on tonight though. The the incel dude. I would bring Jared, him Marshall for sure. Mathers the oh. Yeah. Hundred percent. Hundred fucking percent. He would bring everyone so far down. Like it would just be so easy. It'd be that's an easy win every Hi, time. Hi guys. <laughs> do, do you have a lol cow DP lol cow Ben that you would bring to try and win the dinner for schmucks? Can't yeah. be mine. I I would normally just pick Jared because he is the most pathetic yeah and least self-aware i'm trying to think who i would pick corpse midget would be fun too ha! i said that in chat that would be a that would be a random one ah serious blogs <laughs> if if i brought uh black lives or black white white men fart in my face matters guy oh my god Stormy Lane, i think that might be a pretty heavy hitter at the dinner a hundred percent heavy hitter. He would just talk about dinner. farts all night. <laughs> He's just begging everybody to <laughs> fart in his face at the dinner table. Fart and it. somebody, somebody's somebody obviously going to bring King Cobra. <laughs> Cobra's doing it. Cobra's ripping. Yeah. Um. We should we should do a uh, drunken peasants mukbang dinner for schmucks. Everybody show up to the dinner with their <laughs> drunken peasants. Schmuck. I'd show up to that dinner easy. Yeah. So. Yeah. T <laughs> uh, Bob uh, is a good one. There's a lot of good ones. Brett, you know, there's so many. Shanny. Is, uh, uh, I, I kinda, she would eat all the food. She'd eat your food too. Yeah, right? You'd be like, where's my right? food? She'd be like, I want it. I want to secure right, some suicide fit tit. It's literally why I didn't choose Shanny, because I'm trying to have some of my dinner. Holler if you hear me, and welcome to this week's edition of Luke Targets, because the Sweet Baby Inca scandal, if you want to call it that, or debacle, or dead reckoning of wokeness in the video game industry, continues on, continues on, and you know it's starting to get some traction between the statist likes of the Department of Homeland Security now getting involved, and also the uh, fake conservative controlled opposition likes of the Daily Wire and one of their clods getting involved. Yes, Mr. Matt Walsh. Because now, 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 the deeper we go down this road, now, 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 that's some Christian shit. Baby Inc. getting pathetically defended by complete, complete dangerous threats to American truth, e.g. journalists and the worst kind gaming journalists. We now see an era where more is coming forward and now more individuals coming forward and saying the things that are proving themselves to be people that we never should have respected or cared about in the first place. E.g. that one little uh, sister soldier talking about how dangerous it is to be around white people. Um, lady, trust me. You are lying, okay? You basically are doing nothing more than trying to do your best. In He's bringing up Sista Soldier. That's like some mid early '90s shit. I, I'm not familiar with Sister Soldier. She I'm was a rapper. She was a rapper, a, a woman rapper in the '90s that got some like negative press for some shit okay. she said. Imitation of it's dangerous to be around white people. Something like that. Theory fuel lies. Do you guys ever fo follow the plot with him? Because I don't know what the fuck he's saying at all. <laughs> I thought you watch him. <laughs> I just listen. I well, that's know. why it turns <laughs> his brain off. And you can to talk about the evil dangers of white people. 
hoping that enough white guilt fueled white liberals will eventually go and cut you a check and promote you as something something straight from Shangri-La when really you're nothing more than a disgusting critical race theorist who has no IQ, hence why you need to go and find the uh, Louis Farrakhan sheen across Karl Marx's dogma in order to get your way into a business you never really cared about actually getting into to really work in that business or industry just so that you can go and take so we're all what communists. you were brainwashed with in college out into the world because basically the woke mind virus gets generated in the petri dish that is uh, the college institutes of america so that then the virus can be perpetuated everywhere and well it turns out that the video game business and its antibodies or its immune system are now racking everything all up and getting everything knocked down again. And, well, they don't like that. In case you're wondering about the endless analogies with Gamergate or repetitions of Gamergate, because, well, when it comes to these ideological sociopaths, whether they be in politics or in media, in journalism, in gaming, or as they tried to come into gaming... They unfortunately came across the proof that passive mediums like TV or film, most people will go and get the propaganda in there and they'll just take it. And unfortunately, with gaming, on the other hand, in one for another, the same reason why those same loser woke journalists that won't shut up by Gamergate treating it like it's Vietnam <laughs> want. He never stops. There's no gaps. There to be nothing. There's never a complete thought. I feel like I'm listening to someone reading the dictionary or something. Yes. But or the Bible. Easy modes <laughs> and everything else like that to be easy. The micro and machine, man. I'm not like talking no, about something cool no, like at, micro machines. At least the micro machine man would make like a, a full point and like finish the point. He would just move on very quickly to the next one. He's just like, here's the thing I'm talking about. Now I'm going to bring up all these random things that might somewhat relate to it. And then he just lists them off. Gamers is because gaming is a challenge. It is a contest. Whether it's the player versus the game itself, the other players or the developers, they are expected and they are trained indirectly or directly to compete. There's a reason now one of the big new rises in sports is now competitive gaming, whether it's Overwatch League destroyed by Frost as much as G4 was destroyed by Frost or any other kind of league out there to the point where now playing Madden is now a little pre-game pro Super Bowl tournament bit right there to play Madden competitively. Yeah, I mean, like, why not? Like, why not have... Because a lot of people play these sports games. They put out a new one every year. So why not have a tournament amongst the, the people who play it on the Super Bowl? I, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but I'm guessing, like... You choose one of the two teams from the Super Bowl and you just play. Sounds fun. Your mic's off, Billy. And you're, oh, yeah, I'm, I, I can't believe you followed what he just said. I'm sitting here trying to follow what he was saying. <laughs> yeah. I'm still trying to catch up with what the hell he was saying. So, in one form or another, it involves competing. And the competition ideas is something that the left knows they will always lose in a fair fight. Hence why they have to go and play dirty and artificially get things like ESG to go and insinuate themselves in like a DSP to yeah. companies like EA or Blizzard. So then in order to appease the ESG funding I'm for Black Rock. by Kendall's comb forward. <laughs> yeah, instead of a comb over, he has a comb forward. Vanguard, they then have to go and get strong. I remember, dude, I love triggering his dad so much. <laughs> I'm going to fight his, you guys. I'm going to be go, come into my driveway. His dad was great. What a yeah. what a son of a bitch. Well, the the thing was he was getting really mad cuz Michigan was losing. Like when when we when people were coming over and trolling them, it was when Michigan was like starting to lose. Uh they did win. I mean, they they're the national champions, can't deny that. But he was getting really mad cuz it was a huge like I mean, like the Ohio State Michigan game is like the biggest game of the year and it was looking like they were going to lose at that point and he was getting so mad he's like i knew they were to come here and ruin the stream and he was like like telling us to meet him in his driveway and shit it was so weird 
Yeah. Armed into hiring Sweet Baby Inc. to have 26 writers obsessed with calling themselves empathetic when really they are the biggest vindictive sociopaths in the world who... By the way, we're $51 away from the goal. I would strongly encourage you guys to please help us out with the goal. Tomorrow, I'm going to do an IRL stream on St. Patrick's Day to uh, start reaching next week's goal. So... How are uh, how are the people in our audience feeling about Sweet Baby Inc? Are they loving Sweet Baby Inc? They think they're doing great is. work. It's, it's what people are starting to call GamerGate Two. Oh, I don't know anything about that. Yeah, Sweet Baby Inc is pushing for representation in video games. I'll be right back. And I think uh, the, there's there's a lot of. Um, there's a lot of people talking about it, and I'm wondering if anybody here has actually played Sweet Baby Ink games, if they enjoy any of the work they've done, because I don't know crap about it either way. I'm not a gamer. I know as far as what Sweet Baby Ink talks about, there's other companies. I think Gamer X is something, or G-A-Y-M-E-R-X. There's, there's, there's these other platforms that are there to make games socially aware did you guys see that uh, josh you see the dead by daylight skin the skinwalker character there was a trans person who voiced a uh, a character in the dead by daylight video game and then now there's their their character came out and it's a a very grotesque skinwalker ugly blonde um monster and the trans person is very angry that their voice was used to voice an ugly monster <laughs> she was voicing a monster though no like generally right they're they're like so saying strange. they need reparations against the game because they voiced they did they were not told this monster would be uh so monstrous it it sounds like they even made it like kind of trans by the way you described it. Like, <laughs> well, a... <laughs> I th I think I think the Skinwalker character it takes on the um the it it, it take it shittily takes on the appearance of the last character they killed. So you know it it looks like a big gross blonde in a wig that's a nasty monster. It's icky. So. The person I think is trying to make it something it isn't. Um, I feel like that's the, the internet, though, at this point. And then do we have a problem with... Do we have to be so careful now that we can't... We can't make things that are even not intentionally bad. It, it, it just... If someone takes it bad, is it is it now bad, Right. If they don't, if they don't bother to look at the depth of the character, if they don't look, if they don't look bother bother to look into the reason why the character is the way it is. Do we have? Do we owe reparations? Do we owe an apology? You know. I feel like that like responsibility falls on the shoulders of like bigger companies generally, though, because like I feel like the indie market does that shit all the time with like weird, like uh, call outs to like online culture shit. Yeah, and no one bothers them, you know, because they're so small. So yeah, I guess if you're Sony, don't like make a trans person voice a monster. I don't know. <laughs> I thought that was part of inclusion. Uh, or or I, if a trans person is gonna voice your monster, make it like the most gorgeous monster you can. See, I think that sucks too. Though you shouldn't, you, sh you shouldn't have to hold people's hands. Like if a straight person would have voiced this, would it have been a bad idea? If you're an actor, do you do you get control over the property? And just because you don't like what comes out, do you have con the, the ability to go to court and try and fight this? Of course you could try. Did it, did it gain any ground? Like, did this actually have any effect on the outcome of the game? Or It was a... DLC skin for the the Skinwalker, so I don't know if they've changed it or anything yet. I don't know if they've gone back on it. Simple Country here talking about the uh, Sweet Baby Ink 
uh, company platform. The real issue for Sweet Baby Inc. is some numna on Steam started making a list of all their games to say, hey, don't play these because they're bad. And they tried to get his account taken down, which is why anyone knows their name in the first place. Okay, so some guy was like, hey, these games suck. This this company does shit work on these games. Don't play these games. Don't support this company. And the company tried to get his account taken down. They tried to silence him for saying that you shouldn't play their games. This is That's, Sweet Baby Inc.? Yeah, Sweet Baby Inc. They, if they wouldn't have tried to silence this guy, nobody would care about any of this anyways, is what Simple Country is saying. So is 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 this, is this would this be Streisand effect type things? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm still surprised that gamers even give a shit at all about like PC culture stuff. Most of them I know are like <laughs> the most vulgar people you'll ever meet. Yeah. I I, I don't even know. Like that screen that shows <laughs> people's skeletons being hit by cars. Except it replaces their brains with poop and puts a void over their heart. <laughs> I live you. Ew. How old is um this dude? The like the 30, guy. 32 or whatever. Wow. Yeah. That's a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, I know. Next DP meet up in Kendall's driveway. Ha! Yes! It's I'd clobbering sh- time. I'd show up cry about empathy and proper representation and then have heroes piss on the corpse of an a- characters piss on the corpse of an actual hero and show their bias of all these superheroes are so degenerate except for the female character who then they can go and put all of their Andrea Dworkin garbage into her mouth and treat her like some great noble noble beauty Eh, from the people to whom their idea of beauty is something else to hate because it reminds them that they are a loser who can never compete and on the other hand, you've got controlled opposition that unusually gets all kinds of algorithmic antics in their favor, in spite of people who are far more well-informed, far more experienced in these subjects, and who are actually far more willing to really call all the people out and actually be even-handed. E.g. the Daily Wire and E.g. controlled opposition uh, nonsense maker, little Mr. Matt Walsh, going into the world of gaming and to Sweet Baby Inc. and everything they've been exposed for. Yeah, it's kind of weird how they're, like, gatekeeping Gamergate from other right-wingers. They're like, you can't get in it, Matt Walsh. (laughs) He tried to dip his toes in. I guess there's a new Gamergate happening, which I don't even care. But Yeah, that's the Sweet Baby Inc. stuff. The Sweet Baby Inc., I guess these companies like Sweet Baby Inc. and these video game companies, they get money from the government, like Homeland Security, is behind funding these companies because you get um, more. I don't know. I don't know, write off for inclusionary and in gaming. So these gaming companies are hiring these companies with with federal money. It's 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 a weird a, a weird story. I would like to look into to to figure out the depth of it, but uh, I'm probably so stupid to it that talking about it right now makes me a Nazi and telling people that somehow having any interest you cannot see me in entertainment is wrong having any interest in gaming is wrong well 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 you know it's people like them that really always want to go and invoke the spirit of in one direction or another positively or negatively guys like Mr. Andrew Breitbart and what was it that Breitbart is known for having said what was his little knowledge when it comes to historical context of entertainment oh yes that there was a, a Republican Hollywood and a Democrat Hollywood not too long ago as opposed to everything being a dirge of confession through projection screaming at Orange Man because you know you're guilty of everything you're accusing Orange Man of e.g. Jimmy Kim at the Oscars anytime he's hosting. But there was a time where outspoken conservatives like a John Wayne or even conservative women like Lana Turner and Barbara Stanwyck were existing. And also people running the studios, as in E.G. the Warner Brothers, Mr. Jack Warner, and also legendary filmmakers who are not born American, but certainly like most people that are first generation American, appreciate coming over here and the freedoms they get a lot more. Like Roman Polanski. Me, Megan Rapinoe idiot ever will. (laughs) 
<laughs> like uh, Frank Capra. Yes, that man behind things like Mr. Smith Goes to Washington or It's a Wonderful Life. You know, films that go on and endure. And one way or another, the Marxist garbage, whether you see in actual political police states like Soviet Russia. There's Venezuela, still conservative or filmmakers. Company. There's still conservative actors. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it hasn't gone anywhere. It's 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 the you say you say there was a John Wayne, then there was a Clint Eastwood, and there was a Mel Gibson. There's there's going to be conservative actors the entire time. Uh just like there was a ton of liberals in Hollywood forever. By the way, there still is a Clint Eastwood. He's still alive, still making movies. Yeah, there's gonna be there's gonna be more of them. I, I'm pretty sure uh Chris Pratt is kind of a conservative guy, and he's the star of a ton of stuff. That goes and gets itself under the jackboot of ESG, uh, or companies that are there to profit from ESG funding, like Sweet Baby Inc., all eventually die out. The ESG funds run out because, well, unlike all these blue-haired land whales with their mother's credit card or perpetually have their both their parents on standby, somebody's got to go and pay the bill. And it even means ESG funds eventually actually have to be justified with profit. And if you have no profit margin whatsoever, then that means trash. Just look at the Daily Wire and how you ever wonder why a guy like a Matt Walsh or a Ben Shapiro will yell at people for not working up to the level or standard they want the, that you should go. The real problem with conservative Hollywood is you have guys like Ben Shapiro funding complete dog shit. That's that's why you think conservative Hollywood doesn't exist. You got uh, Alan, uh, is it Richardson or Alan Richman, the guy who plays Jack Reacher? Huge, tall, conservative, blonde guy. He was in the new Fast and the Furious movie. Absolute unit. Wonderful human being. He's he's conservative. Hollywood has room for conservatives. And work yourself fingers to the bone and have no ability to feel joy in life at any time. Chase, your cousin's awesome. Love that guy. You know, like a gaming being a hobby. And, well, let's just say that the people that struck down the uh, Juanitas back in the day of Gamergate then or of Gamergate 2, they are the types that want to enjoy their hobbies and be left alone instead of see their hobby also be turned into another weapon for a, the 14th coming of Herbert K. Sorrell and his Conference of Studio Unions, e.g. Soviet funded. I almost feel like all the people that got money off of the original Gamergate or just like artificially creating a second one 10 years later I don't even know if it's artificial like people have been arguing the same argue the entire time right like now there's just these companies that are probably benefiting from the original Gamergate conversation by having these these well, yeah uh, it's it's artificially being resurrected 10 years later they're like oh the thing that made us popular 10 years ago is dying off. We need to, like, fluff it back up again. And that's what it is. You look My. at Sweet Baby Games and their, their writing credits, and there's a few games they were a part of that were, like, too big to fail. But then they had, like, 26 writers on the Suicide Squad game. And the dialogue on that was part of the reason why everybody said the game was, was shit. But I think the game was just shit all over. Horseshit, except now it's Chinese or WEF funded horseshit. While an idiot like Matt Walsh is the kind of guy who, well, all of those generations of people who, whether they were really conservative or not, just giving up and letting entertainment be run entirely by b a bunch of uh, bloated Bolshevik buffoons, guess what? You are then going to go and have nothing but woke garbage in Disney movies and in comic books and in video games. And I can't help but notice that Daily Wire doesn't mind complaining about them in the most Wikipedia skimming article fashion. But when it comes to any actual real knowledge or passion, what they're talking about, it's almost as if they are sanctioned controlled opposition like uh, Stephen Crowder exposed them as with the likes of Candace Owens or Ben Shapiro or Matt Walsh or Michael Knowles. And that, well, why would they want to go and actually stand up and do anything to stop or curtail or to counteract any insufferable major corporation woke garbage being certain inserted into video games? Because 
If that garbage wound up going away and eroding or being counterbalanced, then that means they would have less easy clickbait to go and talk about. Because why actually go out into the world and do anything to protest or counteract or maybe even produce independently games that go against the Sweet Baby agenda? That would require actual effort and time that is a lot more intense than simply complaining about something for the easy clicks that the Daily Wire lives for. Hence why you see an idiot like Matt Walsh look at your neurotics or your quartering. Who's that? Who am Girl! I? All I know is go I'm sorry, puppy. I scared my doggy by doing the goal yell. Sorry, but sorry. Sorry, baby. Anyway, thank you for the goal. And uh, let's uh, let's check out the new King Cobra mead in honor of the goal. Let's see what King Cobra's new mead is all about. Uh, you know what? Goal mead. I'm going to play it again, too, We because it's so good. Here it is. Stand up strong Face the truth about themselves To understand what went wrong I know we can find a way I know we can find a way I know we can find a way Stand up It's amazing Stand up It's amazing Stand up All right, let's check this out. Oh, we doing this. We got to filter it out now. It's been 12 days. Oh, no. 12 it's days. Out. It's peach mango habanero uh, mead. Phone down. All right, now we're cooking, YouTube. Got this goddamn, what's it called? Habanero peach mango, I think. I don't know. <laughs> Killer on Road says, sounds like white people salsa, yeah, like but made into a mead. Mango. Yeah, no, think of it, yeah. It's like, eh, we're filtering out the wine. Some of it got in the airlock, but I do not care. The, the lid's cracked, so that's why he puts the blue tape on it, right? <laughs> I, I think. Jar here. Joshy, buy a new lid. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, that smells like some... Uh, Hot it, tamale, I'm sweating. Some wine. Some, some wine. wine. This makes me need to pee. Huh? It does look like urine. It's like urine if you have like a flu. <laughs> that sick and chunky piss. Now, is he going to pour it into this jar so then he can clean out the other jar and then filter it back into this jar? There was zero splatters. That was a good pour. Uh-oh. 
You don't want to filter I, out the, uh, what's it called? Did I speak too soon? Oh, he does have the filter in there. Habanero mead. I'll leave all, like, the yeast and, like, the fruit behind. Might have spilt a little bit on the counter, but who cares? It can be cleaned up. That was a much better pour than I've seen many of his other mead transfers. It's a couple quarts short because of all the fruit that we put in there, but we can add some uh, stuff to it. We just uh, rinse it all off here. Now that we're Chase, jar, we're Chase in the chat asks, would you drink this, Tubes? So far, this is one of the more drinkable meads I've seen him make. I take a shot. Dish soap. There's, there's no, like, Some cookies and shit in it, so. It soap, do a thing. This is up there on the drinkability scale. Have a towel real quick. That's definitely a nice looking jar of uh, homemade homemade mead. Oh, man, that definitely smells spicy enough. Huh? Yeah, I don't li like even. I'm sure someone could make a good habanero mead. It's been like, done already. Yeah, yeah, sure. Like uh, when I lived in New Mexico, like green chili beer was like a very common thing. I don't, I don't like spicy beer. I, you know what? It took me until like the last year or so to warm up to, uh. Bloody Marys. I always thought like a spicy drink was gross until Last like a year or so. Yes, actually. And you know, Damn. I'm a, you know, I'm a drinker like uh, it, it was last July. I uh, me and my friend, we went to the two day no effects concert in Tacoma. Wow. That recently. And yeah. And after after day one, I was like wrecked because it there was no shade, by the way, too. So. Like it was a beer festival where people it, it, we got VIP tickets and you with the VIP tickets, you got unlimited tasting of beer. So I was fucking Damn. drunk in the hot July su sun and there was literally nowhere to go to be in the shade. You know, so uh, the next morning I was all sunburned and and like dehydrated and wrecked. And my friend was like, I'm getting a Bloody Mary. And I'm like, huh, I always thought that. <laughs> yeah. And I thought to myself, I'm like, to me, when I would hear that in the past, I would be like, ooh, that sounds gross. It's like an alcoholic V8 or something like that. It's really, really good in a moment like that. I, dude, it it was like, like super potion or something. Cause Sweet with, nectar. <laughs> dude, within like a couple hours, I'm in the fucking mosh pit, like tearing it up. Like, woo! Yeah. yeah, dude. It was insane. It's an elixir for real. It, yeah. It, it does stuff. It's a potion. I and, and I've also enjoyed Caesars, too, because of that, which is, it's what's, a bloody... What's the difference between a Caesar and a Bloody Mary? Uh, Clamata. Hmm. They put uh, clam juice in, uh, yeah. in a Caesar. That's the only difference, really, as far as I know. Yeah, I started drinking micheladas a couple years ago. I was on a michelada kick. Similar. They were, but it's they're, beer. They're very, a michelada has beer in it, right? Uh, yeah, it's beer. Uh, uh, usually a Mexican beer, like a Pacifico, maybe, and uh, some V8 or tomato juice or clamato yeah. sometimes. Yeah. And then some spices. It's really good.
Now, really quick, those people watching at home, $10 patrons and above this Monday, Ben is debuting the 3.5 hour epic. He's been editing down from maybe nine hours total. He's been editing for months. It's coming out this Monday. What a, what a way to spend 10 bucks yeah. patrons, $5 and above. We got bonus episodes coming up. Why not go for that $10 and you above, should. but it, but one dollar and above, if you want to be in the fan chat, one dollar and above. If you're if you're a patron of any monetary level, you get to be in the fan chat by linking up your Patreon account with Discord and coming into our Discord. Yeah, and so, uh, if you need help finding where to go or how to link things up, ask uh, someone in the Discord, and they'll tell you how to do it. Yeah. I'm gonna let that jar soak and do a thing. Yeah, that's not quite a full jar of mead, YouTube. So we're gonna add. We're gonna add, add some horsey to it? to it. Is it good to just add water like this? Is that a regular it thing? Like some good stuff, dude. I'm gonna add some of this water to it. Adding more water doesn't make sense. Like but... that. Got some purified water. Just a little bit to top it off. So we get a full jar here. Look at that. Beautiful. Then we're gonna grab our lid. Whew. I have no idea how this is gonna <coughs> taste. All I know is I'm making a jar of the good stuff. The good stuff. Is he gonna retape it up now? <laughs> yeah what is up with that finger like what did he do to it i my thought is it's still from the cat but i don't know he broke it off and no naked and laughing his asshole. <sighs> what if what if he got some sort of like finger disease in the cat wound from being with naked and laughing? It's from her turbo yeast. Oh. It's dissolving his fucking <laughs> My man gets a lot of mileage out of that blue tape. We are. There it is. VR Troopers. Anybody excited for X Men ninety seven? Me. Yep. One hundred percent. I I saw a meme today. Uh, it said uh, X Men ninety seven. Uh, it was like a, a trading card for X Men ninety seven, but then it said Rogues missing ass. Because I guess Rogue's butt's a lot smaller now than it huh. was in the the other versions. Um, I, they were pushing that hard at Comic Con, and uh, they played it before both of the panels that I went to, and it got like oh, like huge ovations, like huge pops from the audience there. So they yeah, were excited about for that. The, for the most part, I think people are excited for it. I haven't seen anybody really. Other than that, that rogue's butt is smaller thing. I haven't seen any negative commentary on it yet. Just wait. Just wait. Like Eric <laughs> July and his ilk will cry about something. Yeah. Josh. Yo. If they could bring back a cartoon from your childhood the way they brought back X-Men 97, what cartoon would you want them to bring back? 
Probably a uh, Courage the Cowardly Dog. Okay, you're a little baby. Not Denver yeah. the Last Dinosaur? Denver was I watched I watched Denver the Last Dinosaur pretty He's regularly. My friend and a whole lot, a more. lot more. With yeah, they they missed the episode where Denver eats all those kids. <laughs> What era was that? Was that like the 80s or am I bugging uh, Let me see the years on Denver. I, w- I would guess early 90s. Let me see. I would say, yeah, 91, 92 probably. I could be completely wrong, though. Well, that was like the year I was born, so I wouldn't. Let's see. Yeah. Ca- Courage was the right answer for you, but it made me seem like an old man when you said it. So Denver, the last dinosaur. During Courage? Actually, 1988 was when Denver wow. came out. Yeah. Wow. Way earlier. I've never even seen it. What is that even? Denver, the last dinosaur. <laughs> He's it, my friend and a whole lot more. Denver, he was like a guitar playing? The last was dinosaur. He, he will make you his dino whore. I think that was Was he like a song. guitar playing dinosaur that came back from time to hang out with like kids, right? Or, I, I could vaguely remember it. It's something sick, like that. honestly. <laughs> Great theme song. I'm trying to think if there was any other cartoon from my childhood. Like I, I liked the uh, Gummy Spider-Man. Bears. Gummy Bears. I yeah, love but Gummy I, Bears. I don't know if there's anything about spy, uh, Gummy Bears that make me want to bring it back. You Great know, Great theme song. <laughs> A theme song, yeah. They're Gummy dashing. Bears. Yeah, it's they're dashing Bouncing. and daring, courageous and caring, faithful and friendly with stories to share. Out in the forest, they sing out in chorus, marching along as their song fills the air. Gummy bears bouncing here and there and everywhere. High adventure that's beyond compare. They are the gummy bears. That's it. This shit was fired. That maybe hit my yeah, upper register. Bears, you should cover it. I don't do that for free. Gummy anymore. Bears was dope. I watched Gummy Bears religiously. Then the Spider Man TV series was the one that I liked even more than uh, X Men, even. I was watching that Spider Man. I'd be running Joe, home to watch Joe it. Joe Perry from Aerosmith did the theme song for the Spider Man uh of that era. Radio active Spider Man. Yep. Yeah, he liked uh talk boxes, which is like a, a guitar effect. And uh he, yeah, he did that. Man. And then uh fuck. Then Power Rangers kind of came in and it became live action and you like you loved I, when I was a kid, I, I that was probably the last thing I watched that was like a kid show. I didn't like it. was like it. the tail end. I could tell it was all stock footage. Like, even though I didn't know the original show, it was clear that it was just Japanese stock footage. Yeah, but those toys, those toys were cool as hell. I saw <laughs> um I saw Zack the Black Power Ranger at Seattle Comic Con. I saw the Billy the Blue Ranger when I went a couple years ago. Three of them are like dead, right? Uh, no, only uh, one. Or well, the two the of them. Green are dead. and then the yellow. Yep. And then yep. there's like a weird thing with one of the other Power Rangers. I think had a weird murder thing. They I had uh know. the the second Yellow Ranger was there sharing a table with the Black Ranger. Aisha. Yep. Ah. Yeah. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. That cartoon pissed me off. And I don't know why. I was pissed. You know, George Clooney was in that movie. Uh, The actual Killer Tomato movie, that was one of George Clooney's early films. Yeah. Little Um, baby Clooney. I think we're going to wrap it up. I think we had a great Saturday bonus show. And uh, I'm probably going to IRL stream on this channel tomorrow in honor of my favorite holiday. And uh, we'll we'll start a new goal tomorrow, and it's, I mean, we'll be back coming up here on Monday, so don't miss it. Thanks to everyone who supported us. We will see you next time. Have a great night, everybody. Chucky Arlaw! In the beginning, there was...
was nothing. And then there was the Drunken Peasants Podcast. Drunken Peasants. Drunken Peasants. Drunken Peasants. Drunken peasants from the strangest corners of the internet Gonna get TP'd by Billy and Ben You know where you can find them at Get ready cause they're gonna kick your Drunken peasants Drunken peasants Drunken peasants Drunken peasants, Drunken peasants.